Allora, benvenuti, vi do il benvenuto da parte dell'IRS eh, a questo primo di due incontri in lingua inglese e eh, che speriamo sia eh, il primo di una lunga serie che faremo. Eh, ma visto che abbiamo eh, tanti collegati da casa, eh, dall'estero e, e il nostro relatore, io passerei subito... I move to English. <ride> ok. Um, well, I wasn't sure if to make this introduction in Italian or, or in English, because I don't know if you're all English teachers or speakers. Um, but uh, then I thought that the reason why we are here at, is that uh, IRSE has been working uh, um, uh, uh, for uh, 50 years uh, to create high quality occasions uh, for English teachers and English learners and also because we hardly believe in the importance of English as a common language. Uh, that's also why in our future planning, we hope to uh, set up more and more initiatives in English, um, uh, even if not concerning English language learning itself, uh, but maybe learning other subjects uh, such as economics, uh, science, uh, uh, history, society, uh, European literatures uh, in English. Today we start this uh, cycle of two training afternoons around critical thinking and public speaking. Uh, together with uh, international experts uh, uh, in uh, language and uh, communication. Uh, these trainings uh, have been conceived together with the teacher, Maddalena Lott. Um, Hello, um, and they have been conceived not only for English teachers, uh, but also for any other kind of professionals uh, who deal with uh, communication and public speaking uh, in their everyday job. Uh, and also for, uh, for students as well. And uh, uh, what else? I think Madalena is quite ready to introduce uh, Russell Stannard. Uh, I just want to thank Russell a lot uh, for being here with us. Hi, Russell, and welcome. Hi. And uh, I don't know if our audience already knows him. Uh, I've known him personally for a couple of weeks. And uh, apart, apart from his big uh, expertise uh, in uh, communication and public speaking, uh, I think this training will be uh, as engaging as uh, he is as a person. So have a good training. And uh, Maddalena, to you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. So welcome, dear guests, both in person and online. I see you quite numerous, both online and in person. Um, this is the first of these two training afternoons uh, on, uh, let me say, hot topics like critical thinking and public speaking, not only for uh, teachers of uh, English as a language in schools, but also for communication professionals and for Curious learners, why not? In pursuit of developing these 21st century competencies as citizens that we are required to develop. Um, and we are addressing a widely varied audience So uh, during these afternoons. Before introducing uh, Russell Sander properly, as if he needed an introduction uh, as our expert for today's session. Uh, let me tell you, let me give you some hints on how we're running this afternoon together. We are going to spend one hour, 20 minutes uh, before a break, a small break of 20 minutes. And then at 10 past the hour, 10 past five, we are going to have the second sub-session of the day up to 6.30 tonight. Um, so we're going to split the session in these two sub-sessions. Um, as far as uh, questions are concerned, uh, for those of you who are in person here, Eleonora, who is uh, from uh, the Regional Institute of European Studies, is here as a general coordinator. She will hop here and there with a microphone to allow you to interact with Russell. Uh, for those of you who are online instead, who attended the streaming online, well, uh, Zoho Showtime is quite a new platform, might be no to you, new to you, but uh, on the left-hand side of your screen, you might be able to see several buttons. Uh, you may see uh, the question mark button, but also the chat box. 
uh, I know Russell prefers you to interact through the chat box. So you may feel free to ask any question through the chat box. I will report questions to Russell, but Russell is also able to see questions uh, and she will decide, well, uh, how to, to answer and deal with questions in uh, um, due time. Okay, and now into the groove. Okay, Russell, welcome again. So, educational technologist, affiliate trainer at Norwich Institute for Language Education. He was awarded pre prestigious awards in his career, like the Times Higher for his work as Outstanding Initiative in ICT and Education, ILTONS, which stands for English Language Teaching Innovation Award for Technology by the British Council, and uh, Excellence in Teaching and Learning by the University of Westminster. But if his multi-award winning career is not enough for you, uh, you may have a guarantee by the more than 60,000 subscribers of his YouTube channel and teachertrainingvideos.com. Um, as uh, how valuable his expertise may be. So now to you, Russell, the stage is yours. Lovely. Thank you very much for that lovely introduction. <clears throat> this is going to be a very special session today. I've never actually done a session hybrid myself. I've done quite a lot of help working with teachers trying to help them do a hybrid session, but we've got a session here where half of you are in the room and half of you are at home. So I'm going to try and do my best to make it as engaging as possible and to make the session as interactive as possible. Um, I obviously know where all of the people in the room are sitting um, because um, I know that you're all sitting down and you're all in one particular location. But I don't know about those people at home. So it'd be really nice if you could just chat in the right in the chat window. Just tell me where you're sitting at this current moment. Are you in the bedroom? Are you in the front room? Are you in the kitchen? The kitchen's often very popular when I'm doing these presentations. Just in the chat window, it'd be really lovely to know where everyone's sitting. For those of you in the presentation, while they're writing that, I just want you to think about one question, okay? And maybe what I might get is to Eleonora, maybe to run around and collect your answers. Um, maybe you could just get a little piece of paper and just write on a piece of paper for me, just one, one, or I'll do, uh, later on I might do some activities where I ask you to get out your telephones as well, but just for this opening activity, if you've perhaps got a little piece of paper, I just want you to write what is the hardest thing about teaching public speaking on a little piece of paper for me. And I'm looking in the chat window and I can see that people are in their office, they're at home, they're in, we've we got some kitchens, the kitchen's quite popular, um, we've got a few people in their home office, a few people in their study, um, uh, yes, the kitchen seems very popular today. Um, may, perhaps that's because it's Italy. Uh, that may be the reason. Uh, often Italian houses have big kitchens. That might be the reason why everyone's sitting in the kitchen. Um, but good to see. Uh, we've got a few studies in the room. Oh, there's a couple of bedrooms as well. So we've got people all over in the session at home. I'm going to ask the same question to you guys at home as well, online, okay? Can you just tell me, Bedrooms could be becoming very popular. The last few answers, we've got quite a few in the bedroom. Uh, can you just tell me, can you just think in your mind, what for you, because I did a little questionnaire with a group of teachers that I work with at the moment, and I asked them, well, what's the hardest thing about teaching or, you know, teaching critical thinking or teaching public speaking or teaching presentation skills, because that's really basically what it is. But um, what would be the hardest thing? So if I don't know if the people in the actual audience can perhaps write on a piece of paper and then Eleonora can then report back to me some of the best answers. And I'd love those of you in the chat window to think about the same question, okay? What is the hardest thing about teaching public speaking for you? What do you struggle with? Okay, I've, I've identified four things, but I'd be very interested, those of you at home, if you could write it in the chat window, those of you in the session, if in the actual, uh, where, where the presentation is taking place, if you could perhaps write it on a piece of paper, what are the most difficult things about teaching critical thinking, or not, not teaching critical thinking, teaching public speaking. We'll look at the critical thinking later on. Let's start with the with the actual presentations, the public speaking, teaching people how to do a better 
presentation or, or, or more work more effectively. So if you could write in the chat window, guys, I can't see any answers coming up. I'd really like to know just what is the for you the hardest thing? Keep it really short, really short. Yeah, to get people to work without a script. Okay, that's a really nice one, Rory. Good point. Really good. Okay. Okay. So people scripting that, and we'll come back to that point. That's a really interesting point. People scripting. Make students understand the slides shouldn't be crammed with info. Brilliant. Okay. I, I, that's a really big point, and it comes across all the time. Okay. I get that with my students all the time. Okay. So good. Lovely. I don't know if the people in, if we can collect some of the ideas from the people that, who are actually in the audience as well. I'd love to know what um, body language. Yeah, really good point. Body language is so important. I tend to move around a lot and use my hands a lot when I'm presented. I always notice that a lot of people when they present look down, um, but that's interesting. OK, so body language is a key one. If we could get some. Uh, collect some answers together from the audience as well. I'll be interested. Managing emotions, says Angela. Okay, Angela, you might have to over, overcome that. Okay, overcome. Uh, explain a little bit more, uh, Angela, what you mean by that. If you can elaborate, we got overcome shyness. Really good point. Yeah, yeah. Okay, boring speaking. Good. It sounds like we've been having the same students because I get exactly the same problems with my students as well. Okay, so very mo monotonous monotonous yeah very monotone in terms of the way that they present okay okay interesting because your answers are quite different to my teachers i've got a huge great number of teachers that follow me on my youtube channel and i asked a small group of them and they highlighted a few things making them realize that i'm not there at the audience but the classes yes really lovely point simonetta that's a really interesting point i think that happens a lot um students are knowledgeable than teachers so students are more knowledgeable than students uh students are more knowledgeable than teachers conchi can you kind of um elaborate on that a little bit what do you mean more knowledgeable when using technology or more knowledgeable in terms of doing a presentation um very interesting um yeah good so these are really nice just to, if conchi if you could elaborate yeah, speaking without fear okay that's really good we're definitely going to be focusing on that today without a doubt what about in the uh, auditorium? Have we got any ideas, uh, perhaps, um, that, have, that have come back from the audience? Well, uh, our ideas here are teaching how to sound effective and convincing or persuasive, depending on the speaking context. Okay. Re or yeah. overcome fear is another okay, so one. Another one. A lot of you. Now that is certainly that's going to be the second thing that I'm going to be focusing on, the second main area. So that's interesting. Yep, go on. We also we also have keep audience connected with speaker. Yep, really mm -hmm. good, really good. That's particular. I mean, there are lots of techniques for that. Good that connection with the audience, keeping the the, the yeah, really good, lovely point. And importance of empathy in communication. Okay, Ooh, interesting one. I've not heard that before, but I understand what you mean by that. Okay, and that often comes through the interaction that you have with the crowd, but it's uh, with the audience, but it's also to do with what you think about the audience in terms of you preparing for the right audience. So, what, right from the beginning, you're presenting and you've thought about the audience that you're presenting to. So, that's a really good point about empathy. Yes. Um, any more points? Loads of ideas coming through, and they're actually really different to the ones that my teachers have said. So that's going to be interesting. But uh, we can definitely take into into consideration quite a lot of these points, particularly the shyness, and particularly um, uh, some of these points about like how you get make a presentation engaging, etc. Okay. Any more points to come from the auditorium? We are done. Right. OK, lovely. OK, guys, we need to teach where to pause to do getting students to depart from the safety of using a lot of structural phrases. Yeah, Rory. Good point. Rory, that's a really second point that you've raised. There, and I think that's really good. OK, really, really nice point and very true. I'm going to jump into a little presentation. In fact, what I'm going to do is quickly jump onto a presentation and then I'm actually going to do a little activity with you um, to kind of get. Um, uh, you to know a little bit about me, which is going to be a presentation. So it's going to be kind of an example. And I'm going to use a technology in doing that that you might find quite individual, but I'm uh, interested. I'm just going to jump on, hopefully, to my PowerPoint slides. Let's hopefully that I can double click on these and it's going to open up. Is that what I need to do to get the materials going? I'm just going to, because I've got the other one on the screen at the moment. So I'm just clicking over here. Right. Okay. So this is me. And I'm just going to tell you what I'm going to focus on here. 
first thing that a lot of my teachers said to me was, I and mean, this is links in a lot to some of the things that you're pointing about, is, is finding the right topics to talk about. Now, what I mean by that is very broad, okay? In terms of we can make presentations really interesting by making the topic or the tools that we're going to work with interesting so that it becomes more engaging for the students, particularly at the beginning when we want to help them to personalize things, lower levels particularly, but even all, all students. So the topics that we choose and how we how we kind of contextualize those topics is really important. And that's one of the things that I'm going to look at first at the beginning. I'm going to try to show you some interesting ways of getting people to present at the beginning, okay, using some interesting technologies, or I think they're interesting, and I'm going to try and do it for you. And I've actually done some of this work in Italy as well, so it'll be interesting. And then I want to talk about afterwards the second thing that my teacher said is understanding what works and what i mean by that is some of the points that you were making understanding what works means understanding all the things that you need to do within a presentation to make it successful i.e interest in introduction i.e not too much text on the screen i.e good use of visuals i.e good use of your voice so all those kind of little we could almost call them, they're not soft skills, but they're certainly all those incidentals, all those things that we need to consider throughout the presentation that make a presentation really work. And the teachers find it hard not only to teach those things and make it interesting to teach them, but to get the students to stick to them. And you've made some of those points today about students putting too much text on the screen, not using visuals, monotone accent. And we've got to raise their awareness of all these points. OK, the next thing is the structure. Now, actually, what I mean by here, not the structure of the presentation, because that comes in the second point I'm making. What I mean more here is the structure of a lesson that helps teachers to learn how to, or helps students to, 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 to learn about public speaking. There's a certain structure in terms of the way that we need to kind of present the whole topic of critical thinking and the whole topic of public speaking to our students and kind of go through a few stages, okay? And then a key one, and one that I'm hoping to give you a different, a little bit of a different slant on, is the whole thing about how students take a presentation that they've done and improve it, okay? So I'm gonna start with a little activity with you. And what I'm going to be doing through this first activity really is actually kind of highlighting the, that first point about topics. That is looking for interesting topics or interesting ways to contextualize presentations that can make it interesting to our students. And I'm going to just show you a couple of things that have worked for me. And I'll be really interested in seeing if you think, yeah, this could be inter an interesting angle. Now, when we're talking about public speaking or when we're talking about because obviously this is a really broad area public speaking means speaking in public and it could be all sorts of things it could be a present presentation at university it could be a presentation within business it could even be something informal with friends it could be all sorts of circumstances where we might be speaking in public teachers um, and lecturers we're, we're very used to speaking in public all sorts of presentations, um, you know, so we're, we're, when we're talking about these words, we're kind of, <laughs> we're talking really about, you know, it, public speaking is speaking in public, but presentations is a key part of public speaking, okay? So what I'm going to do, first of all, is start with that topic. I'm going to just try and do a little presentation for you. I thought it'd be interesting for you to know something about me. So what I'm going to do is, for this first activity is, and I'll be really interested to know what you think think about this. Could this be something that you could try out with your students? So I'm just going to jump over and do a screen share. And I'm going to actually, I don't need the audio on, but I'm going to click on the entire screen. And I'm going to jump over and hopefully you can see that on the screen, we're on Google Earth. And what I'm going to do is I was thinking this morning, right, okay, I want to present myself to you. It's something I've used. It's a technique that I've used quite a few times. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on search. And I'm going to take you off to Stamford Bridge, which is the home of my favourite football team. 
So I'm a big fan of uh, the team that play at Stamford Bridge, and that is Chelsea. So let's just click here, and we're going to hopefully we're going to fly off to Stamford Bridge. And there we are, guys. So hopefully you can see that now on the screen. Now, what I'm going to do is if you're at home, you can take a few notes. If you're in the audience, you might want to take a few notes. I'm going to do a little presentation for you now just to introduce myself to you. And um, and then I'm going to see whether or not you were listening to me. <laughs> so um, sorry for those of you that are not football fans, but I was thinking of something that would be interesting to present. And I thought, OK, yeah, Stanford Bridge, because I first went to Stanford Bridge in 1972. And um, I've always been a, a fan of Chelsea, actually Chelsea Football Club. They have a very strong connection with uh, Italy because there's been many football managers uh, at Chelsea, including Viali and um, Antonio Conti and uh, a few others as well, as, as well as many um, Italian football players as well. So this is Stamford Bridge. It's the home of Chelsea. Chelsea were formed in 1905. If I click into T 2D view, you can see that Stamford Bridge has a museum and it also has two hotels. It's quite a big area. The stadium holds about 42,000 people. And if I come back into 3D and just move around a little bit, you'll see that right alongside, and if I just stop it there, I can just click and stop it, right alongside Stamford Bridge, there's a kind of railway line. That's the district line. And behind there is a quite famous cemetery called the West Brompton Cemetery. Now, Chelsea Football Club is not in Chelsea. Uh, Chelsea Football Club is in London, but it's in the borough or the kind of area, the district of Fulham. But they're not called Fulham Football Club because there was already a football team called Fulham. So if I just move out a little bit, so I'm just really click, very simple. I can click on this button here. You can see how near Chelsea is to the River Thames in London. So it's actually Chelsea is the most central football club, the most closest to the centre of London. But see, over here is the this is actually Fulham, this area, as you can see. But unfortunately, there was already a football club over here called Fulham. Called yeah, here they are. And so they had to think of another name. So they called themselves Chelsea. Chelsea being a really rich area in London. OK, now. What I'm going to just do now is just come back. So just using these, this button here, very, very easy to use. So I could just zoom in, zoom out, go 2D and go 3D. Really simple. And when you go into 3D moves, it starts moving around. Now, whenever you click on the screen, it will stop moving. So when you click on 3D, go 2D and then 3D, every time you do that, it will kind of start moving. OK, now I'm just going to show you something really interesting. So me and my brother, we are season ticket holders at Chelsea. And I'm going to take you down and just show you where I actually walk into the stadium. So I'm going to drop my little man onto the screen here and this is where I so this road here is the Fulham Palace Road or Fulham Road sorry Fulham Road and if I come down here this is actually where me, me and my brother normally we meet here and then we walk into the stadium together to watch a game sometimes we put a bet on 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 the game so if we're feeling a bit lucky, we might put a bet on, not that often, but occasionally we do. And we always meet, me being a very typical Englishman and my brother as well, we always meet before the game, about an hour before we go into the ground, we have a couple of beers together. And it's it's a nice moment for me and my brother because it means that we always get to meet up and spend some time together. It's the only time we ever hug as well. So when Chelsea win, uh, we'll normally jump into each other's arms every time Chelsea score a goal. But that wouldn't normally happen, uh, being uh, typical Englishmen as we are. OK, it's a lovely technology to use. And I've often got my students to do presentations with this tool. It's so easy to use. It's really engaging. It can be really personalised. Just to give you an example, at the beginning of this year, I just asked my students to choose anywhere on Google Earth 
that they would like to present, just like I've done. So I started with me doing a presentation anywhere on Google Earth that they would like to present. So I did my presentation in class using Google Earth. And then I said for homework, right, you're going to do the same. I quickly showed them how to use Google Earth, but it really is that easy. It doesn't take that much to learn. And then in the next lesson, I got them to do presentations. Now, interestingly, it was online. So we were working with Zoom and I put my students into breakout rooms and I got them to present to each other. And the idea was that they just presented somewhere so that they could get to meet or get to know more about each other and do it through a presentation. Now, that's what I mean about a topic or a tool or something that's really going to give the students um, an opportunity to build up their confidence because one of the things that often happens, and it'd be interesting to see whether you agree with me or you don't, is that if we give students obscure or more or topics that they, they can't really, really relate to, especially at lower levels, especially when we're trying to build up their confidence, then that can actually be quite difficult. And so I like these kind of activities because they really, really link well together in terms of um, meaning. It can be something, especially, you know, at the beginning in terms of building up their confidence, doing presentations in, in front of each other, very, very personalized in terms of the way we can use Google Earth. Now, I actually set up a little activity on here as well, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you to do this activity. So what I've done here, and I'm using the technology here, which I think at the moment is probably, I probably would be right in saying this, the number one language teaching online app that's being used by teachers. There are literally millions of teachers now using this. I remember when I presented word wall for the first time so i have a youtube channel where i i make videos showing teachers how to use technology and you know they watch the videos and learn how to use different technologies and then try them out in their classes with their students or for homework or if they're teaching online and the day i presented this technology it really generated a huge amount of interest because you've got 36 games in one technology okay i'm going to set up one of these games now to see if you've been listening to me so those of you in the class what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually leave the screen on so that you can kind of do the activity in your head and those of you at home you'll be able to actually do this activity so i'm just going to click on this button here hundreds of activities on here and all you need to do in this first activity guys is simply drag the words in to complete the sentences. All right, for example, Chelsea was founded in 1905. So I'm just gonna see whether or not you are listening to me. Now, what I'm gonna do for those of you online, okay, so I'll, I'll screen share this again for those in the audience. I'm gonna click on share, I'm gonna click on set assignment, I'm gonna click on start, and I'm gonna click on copy, and then I'm gonna stop sharing. And in the chat window, I'm gonna share with you that link, okay? And you should, those of you in, in online, should be able to click on that and actually do that activity. And I'm going to get immediate feedback to see whether or not you are actually listening to me, okay? So for those of you who are um, online, if you can click on that link and do that activity, that would be brilliant. For those of you in the room, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to screen share the activity on, on, on the screen so at least you can look and work it out for yourself where the answer's go, and let's see if or not you were listening to me. So I'm gonna just do a screen share. So for those of you at home, just click on that link and do the activity. I'll give you a couple of minutes. For those of you in the class, gonna jump back again, do another screen share. Let's come back to that activity. And I'll leave that on the screen just for a couple of minutes. And hopefully you'll be able to do that activity, okay? One thing, I mean, I'm not with you today. If if you know if we'd have perhaps thought about this even more it could have been possible for me to have printed this this is one nice thing about word well you can use it in the class so you can print the activities out and get the students to to, to complete them in the class and of course it's easy to set up as an online activity as well so i'm just going to give you a couple of minutes and while i'm you're doing that i'll just carry on talking about google earth so I've been training teachers to use Google Earth for a long time because it really does allow you to 
contextualize nice presentations. Let's just think about a few examples where you recently went on holiday, places you would love to see around the world, your locality where you live, something like, for example, the school you went to when you were younger or where you were born or a favorite place that you used to go to. Or I've done presentations, for example, where I've shown people what I used to do when I was younger and the places I used to go, like the swimming pool, the ice skating rink, the field that I used to play football in. So all sorts of things that I can really personalize by making use of Google Earth, okay? Just gonna leave that on the screen for a couple more minutes. So what I'm trying to say here, and this is the key point I'm trying to make, particularly when we're starting up, the presentations, building up our confidence with students who might be very shy, things that they can resonate with more, things that are personalized, things that are really linked to them can be really powerful at the start. You're not going to use Google Earth all the time for practicing presentations, but it's certainly got a place as a way of introducing the topic and getting the students maybe motivated and interested in it because they can talk about themselves. I'll be interested to see what you think in a minute. Now, what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to click on the results and see if anyone at home has actually been doing that activity. So those of you at home, those of you in class, obviously, hopefully, you would have, I'll go through the answers in a minute. But let's just jump back to the results. Okay. And if I go here, I can see that 10 of you have so far done that activity. OK, and I'm going to click on it and it's actually going to give me the results. And in fact, most of you are obviously listening quite carefully. I do. I have got a couple of mistakes. Yeah, I did say that I was a season ticket holder. OK, that is someone who has a ticket that they uh, can use for the whole year to go to the match. So I said me and my brother are both season ticket holders. OK, so I'm a season ticket holder. OK, excuse me. And so this is a really nice technology to use because it's great for quickly checking, understanding. I can see Rory was the quickest to, to finish. He finished in only 34 seconds. And I, it gives me a lot of detail about uh, what, you, uh, what you did. So it's really, really nice technology to use as well. And I'll talk about this a little bit more in a minute. OK, let's just jump back to the presentation for a sec. So I'm going to stop sharing and just come back in. OK, I'd be very interested if we could get hang on um, the presentation's not disappeared off the screen. So hopefully I'm going to come back on in a minute. One second. Let me just see if I can get my presentation back up. OK, let's have a quick look. But uh, if not, let me just have a look and see why it's not coming up on the screen now. OK, let's have a look again. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Anyway, I'll be there. Yeah, lovely. I'll be really interested in what you think about Google Earth. Could that be an interesting tool that you could use either? First of all, you doing a presentation. So those of you on the chat window, I'd love to know your, your thoughts on Google Earth as a technology. I might show you a couple more things in a minute with Google Earth. And particularly those in the audience, um, is that something that you've ever done? Or could you see that that could be useful? I'd love to get some comments from the audience as well. OK, so if anyone in the chat window be be interested to hear what you have you've ever used Google Earth or would that be something you would consider using? I really like it because it links back to personalization and some of the points that you've been making about trying to get the students initiated in doing presentations, particularly because they might be shy in front of each other. Remember, presentations don't always have to be with a with a PowerPoint slide. OK, so you might be doing presentation, talking through a map. It might be a presentation talking through some pictures, etc. OK, obviously, most of the time these days we're using PowerPoint slides. But um, so I'd love to see your comments in the chat window. OK, yeah. OK, love it from Christina and love to collect some answers from from the audience as well. So Christina's commenting here. A great tool also to talk about hopes and dreams. I love it like where you'd like to live. OK, I mean, I've lived in Spain. I've lived in Greece. I spent a lot of time in China. Um, so I've used it for I've, I've used this tool many, 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 many times. And then I often link it to little activities and then I get the students to try and do something. So lovely. Yeah. Yeah. OK, Enrica. So that's good to hear you saying that. Yeah, you, you was aware of it, but you've never used it. 
go that extra step in Rico. It's a really powerful tool. It's very engaging. You know, I, I'm only showing you the best stuff. <laughs> I'm only showing you the things that I've done that have really, really worked. Okay. So yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I like that thing there, Rory, um, uh, about saying, you know, the visual stimulus, which can help a presentation. So obviously, you know, Later on, if you did something like this, you might even start to start looking at the structure of the presentation and how would you structure something in Google Earth and do it and make it really engaging and interesting. But maybe at the beginning, it's just this getting the students off the ground and getting them to do something and personalizing it and making it interesting as a way of um, uh, of, of getting students speaking. OK, right. OK. Rayendra is saying, yeah, great idea. Never thought of using it that way. So that's good. Love to get some more feedback. Is anyone can think of any more ideas? I've used this for many, many things. OK, I've thrown a few out to you. I mean, I'll give you a little bit more of an idea. Another thing that this works really well, if you want to connect it into the book. OK, so if you're using a book in class with your students and often a lot of English teachers are, then, you know, we get different things come up. I don't know, Niagara Falls or, you know, you're off to see the pyramids or the, the Nile. I remember a little while ago I was doing something on volcanoes and we went on Google Earth. We went off to Volcano Island um, and really, you know, uh, couldn't believe that I could find go, 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 Volcano Island on Google Earth and and. and kind of show them what Volcano Island looked like. Absolutely fantastic. So it can work really well for that as well. Yeah. Whoa. We've got three yeah. speakers here yeah. in Lovely. the audience. Yeah, great. Magdalena, <laughs> love to hear your points. Yeah, what, what are the audience uh, what in the auditorium saying? Yeah. The fact is that we've got shy speakers here <laughs> in ah. the audience. Oh, so God. they won't be saying anything. Oh God! Well, just on the right oh, on the little piece of no paper, way. I'd just be love to know what they um. I've think. got one. We've yeah. got a question. Yeah. We've got a question. No, no, I don't have a question. <laughs> no, <okay. laughs> I'm not a public speaker. Okay. I'm not a teacher. I'm not a student. I'm a bike guide, and I right. think to use Google Earth uh, to involve people in uh, letting to to letting them know where we're going with the bike is a great idea, especially with foreigners, you know. I want to show them what, where in Italy we're going. And I have to show this from somebody maybe from New Zealand. He doesn't even know where Pordenone is. So I guess Google Earth would be a fantastic tool to use. Exactly. Lovely. That's fantastic. Obviously, I wasn't planning that. I didn't realize I was going to have someone in the audience who's a bike guide. <laughs> fantastic. OK, but you can see lovely. That's that's really, really interesting to hear. OK, I mean, um, you know, they're they're very powerful tools. They're very very powerful. Any more? Any lovely co lovely comments. Lovely to hear that. Okay. Um, any other comments, guys, from the audience regarding uh, anything else that's come up? There's some lovely ideas coming up on the screen. People like Wordwall. I will quickly show you Wordwall, guys, because it's fan fantastic. Um, someone's made the point here online about environmental issues and how important they are, and how Wait. you could use that for environmental I issues. Said. Christina, yep, done. Sorry to interrupt you. I raised my hand as if we were in class. Brilliant. <laughs> okay. Uh, we've got a question. Oh, a comment. Fantastic. I have never I have never used Google Earth, but boy, that was quite the eye opener for me. And talk about personalizing. I think in that manner I'm going to make quite a connection with the students that I teach. And that creates a great bond between us. So thank you. Lovely, yeah. yeah it's a connection bond, you see? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm lovely. Can I just make a point, guys, as well, just before we go on? So lovely, lo lo really nice to see that you like my first idea. But, I mean, I've got, hopefully I've got lots more for you, right? But everything I'm going to show you today, everything I'm going to show you, I've got a handout at the end with videos. So if you think, I want to learn to use Google Earth, or I want to learn to use WordWall, or I'm going to show you some other tools and some other ideas, then you can just get this handout at the end you'll be able to click on and watch because what i do is i make videos that show teachers how to use technology all right so you don't need to worry about anything anything that you enjoy today you will get a video from me it's a special handout that i'm going to send you automatically that will give you all the material for you to learn this stuff and try it out with your students okay right uh magdalena any 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 more anything magdalena yeah we have some more um, 
Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, I never did, uh, but uh, I think it could be a good idea to um, let students uh, uh, to present uh, uh, let students present uh, their their own country, since there are many immigrants uh, or not their own country, but their country the country of their families because maybe they are born here, but they mm -hmm. still have uh, some contacts. Uh, wow, absolutely brilliant. Lovely, because I've got a really varied audience here. I've, I've clearly not only got English teachers, I've got people working in all different co sorts of contexts. One, just, just, just I don't want to, I won't exaggerate this technology, okay, it's fab. We will look at it in a little bit more detail in a minute. Not every place is in detail, so you do have to check. You do have to keep that in mind, all right? A lot of places are in incredible detail, and it's amazing but it's not everywhere. So you do kind of have to just keep that in mind, all right? It's not as if you can just say, well, I'm going to fly off to see the Great Wall in China and then it's all in super detail. No, because, for example, in China, certain places have been controlled. But generally, it's incredible how detailed it is. For example, I'm going off to Mauritius next week for a holiday. And, um, you know, I've already flown out there on Google Earth and I've been looking all around and I've seen the hotel where I'm staying and I've looked all around the area. It's incredible the sort of information that you can get on Google Earth. OK, and I'll show you a couple of little tips in a minute. OK, um, yeah. So lovely people saying um, about, you know, projects, for example. OK, um, uh, I think that testing really helps and people learn. That's always said we could take notes and we really paid attention yeah i mean i was just throwing that in the, the the fact that often the first time i do a presentation using google Earth, because what i'm going to do is i'm going to use it in my first session i use it various times but i'm going to use it certainly in my first session and then you know i want the students to pay attention so i give them an activity to do and then i'm going to ask them to prepare their own presentation for homework so i will spend about 10 minutes after i've done my presentation just showing them how google earth works because a lot of teachers don't the students don't know it. it's very easy okay so it's not a complicated tool at all and then i will get them to do their presentations at home now one other problem sometimes comes up and this might be a really good tip to you okay and it's in my video google earth is a little bit internet heavy but if that is the case because sometimes I get my students to present in class and they stand up in front of everyone and do their presentation. Sometimes I've got two or three computers in the room and I just get them presenting in groups. It depends on your circumstances. But if, if you've got a slow internet connection at the school, you can download, you can just download the app on your, on your computer. And then you don't even have to worry about the internet connection, all right? And that is in my video. It shows you where you can get it. And it works just as well. So you can download the 3D app, and then you click on that and run it, and then you don't even need an internet connection, okay? So, okay, lovely. Any any other comments, guys? Um, Madalena, any, anything else coming up in the audience? Or, or otherwise, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of shift off, um, shift onto the Yeah, we, we have, we have one. Oh, in written form. Okay, wow, lovely. Okay. Uh, you know, vintage technology. Okay. Google Earth is able to give unforgettable knowledge to learners. It's really very powerful. Lovely. Great. I'm really glad that you like it, okay? Because it is, you know, something that I use a lot. Um, I do do a lot of teaching of presentation skills and public speaking skills simply because I work at university most of the time. And when I was teaching English, these days I'm only really doing teacher training. But, you know, I obviously taught loads and loads of things about presentations. And it was always my problem. And I think some of you were making that point of how I get that topic going and how I get their confidence to start speaking and presenting to each other. And these are the tools that I like to, 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 to do it. Okay. Right. Brilliant guys. We're going to, there's lots to come today. Um, it's going to be a bit slow, but hopefully I'm trying to make it as engaging as possible. It's brilliant to have Madalena and um, uh, who I've got. Well, Eleanor well, yeah, exactly. uh, We're that's getting okay. there. Brilliant. Eleanor <laughs> running around. So we're getting there. Okay. But let me just jump back guys to the, to, to um, what we were doing. Let's just have a quick look at a couple of other things and then we'll um, take it from there. So just going to come back into my presentation. OK, let's let's just quickly start by having a quick look again at uh, um, WordWall. OK, I'll just show you a couple of things in this tool. Absolutely brilliant. This guys, you can use this in a blended learning course. All right. For example, you know, 
he, you know, you've got, look how many activity types you've got. It's absolutely balmy. So many, so many different ones. And they're so quick to use. Let me just give you an example. All right. Let me just show you. In fact, I'll tell you what, let's just quickly do another example in Google Earth, really quick one, just to sort of give you another taster. And then I'll, I'll make an activity in front of your eyes, okay? You can make 30 odd activities, okay? So let's jump back over, back over to Google Earth and we're gonna click back on this button here. And what I'm gonna do uh, for this second one is, I'm gonna just, I'll, I'm gonna just, again, let's click on here. And I'm gonna take you off to where I used to live, which is in Seville in Spain. So I was also a Spanish teacher as well. And my Spanish is still really, really good, but not quite as good as it used to be when I came back 20 years ago. But I lived in Spain for 11 years and came back and actually taught Spanish in England for about three years. Um, so we're going to go off to the, let's go off to the Plata de España. Uh, Plata de España in Sevilla. Hopefully we can do that. I'm just going to take you off to one of my favorite places in, okay, so here we go. I'm going to take you off to, to, to the Plata de España in Seville. Come right in. Okay, again, lovely place. And it's one of the, re the reasons I love this, just to tell you a little bit about it. It was built for the expo that took place in the 1920s called the Expo of Americas. Okay. And as part of that exposition, um, um, uh, later Seville had a second exposition, but the part of that exposition was that the Plata de España got built. As you can see, there's this beautiful park here. And one thing about this park, guys, is that it's actually where they made the film of Lawrence of Arabia. OK, so that was actually you. A lot of the uh, of that film was actually filmed here. And often when I've seen that film, and I've seen it several times, I recognize couple of the buildings and I'll show you those and so wonderful place to walk around I used to come here really a lot because it was very near to where I lived and just like the last one I can take my little man and actually drop you right on to the square so you can get a little bit of an idea and off we go zoom down so easy all right and then I can just kind of move it around so we get all these different pictures of there it is the Plata de España. And what actually the Plata de España is, you probably can't see it very well here, but if I come in, I might be able to, is that there are like these little boxes of all the different provinces with a map on them. Yeah, so there's Madrid and Seville and Bilbao and Barcelona, etc. Okay, and you can walk all around here. It's absolutely beautiful. Really is a lovely place uh, to visit. Now, look at this. This is a really nice thing about Google Earth. If you click here, you can just come straight back into the map view. So you can jump in and out of the map view. And again, remember, you just zoom in and you can zoom out. It's really easy to use. So that's the Plata de España. But if I just take you over here, I'm just going to move out a little bit more. I'm going to just take you over to this place where we've got the where they did the filming of Lawrence of Arabia. And I'm just going to drop down here. And again, we zoom down and come right in. And these buildings here, and you can see it, look at that, very Arabic style, yeah? OK, beautiful. In fact, that's if I remember right, is a museum, a beautiful square. In fact, you know what? I used to sometimes even run here. It used to be my place for running. It used to get a bit busy in the daytime. But if I got there early enough in the morning then it was a great place for running. So this this is what a, what a wonderful square this is. OK. And, um, you know, so you can you can really bring these places to life. Now, there's another just one final thing I'm just going to point out to you. Right. Every place that you go to, you get this information on the side here. And one thing, you can even make a tour. So just to really quickly show you this, and the last thing is I want to move on and show you lots of other things. But and this is really easy to do. I can click on Add Project. And then I, I'm going to just do, for example, I'm going, to, I'm going to make a new tour. So I'm going to call this New Project. And I'm going to call this one um, Where... So I'm going to call this one Where I Lived. Okay, New Project. So I'm going to put it in here, new project. Lovely. And my project title is going to be Where I Have Lived. Okay. So I click on Save. So now I've added that to my new project, the first place, yeah? And what I can do now is if I flew off to somewhere else, I could add, an, I could add another feature to my project. I could add, I could search for another place. Well, I lived, I also lived in, in I always lived in good places. I lived on the island of Crete. In 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 Greece, in Rethymnon. So I'm going to just put Rethymnon. There it is. I could now fly off there, okay, 
take you off to another place now. Unfortunately, I don't speak Greek because when I lived in Greece, though I, though I did start to study the language, I was really interested in that time because I just qualified to, uh, to be a language teacher. I was really interested in English in my own language. I was really just discovering it for the first time. So I could then add that to my project to say, well, which pro project do I want to add it to? Well, where I lived. Now, any time, any time now, okay, that I, let's imagine it's another day. I hope this is useful too. Let's imagine this is another day and I come on and I've got my projects. I can click here and see all my projects and I can choose the one. And then I can literally use this just by clicking on the buttons. It will zoom off to the places. So I'll go to the first place, to Spain. Yeah, like this. I could have loads and loads and loads of places down here. And then present that. And then click on the next place. And then we zoom off to there. And we go off to the next place. It's so easy to make a project. There's Spain. And then, you know, if I wanted to, I could just add one more. I'm going to add another place. And I'm going to, I'm going to put in Thessaloniki because I also live there in the north of Greece. I lived out there for a year as well. So there it is. And I could then fly off to Thessaloniki. Really simple to do this. And simply add that to my project. Which project do I add it to? The where I live one. Save. So now I've got three places added in to my project okay absolutely fantastic way of working so i love working with google earth the other thing about working with google earth is it's really good because it's also about digital competence digital literacies getting your students to think about these technologies and, and you know and for us as well how we can use them in our own teaching and learning i i use this tool really a lot okay now if i jump back to word wall let me just show you how easy and what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to some of my activities and i'm literally just going to i'm just going to i'm going to edit one and just show you this one edit content okay so this is yeah i'm going to say so russell oh look i've actually so russell moved to spain in 1988 russell also lived in um crete for eight months and then I'm going to do one more sentence. Um, we didn't talk about it, but yeah, let's just put, say, so Russell also spent time in the, let's put, north of Greece. All right. So I'm going to, this is, look how quickly I make this activity, right? So obviously I could write more sentences. Okay. And now we're going to click on done. And now we're going to play this activity. Let me just show you how it's done. So let's click on start. And in this activity, which again, students can, we can print this out and then students obviously got to put the sentences in the correct order, but it's lovely as a homework activity. So I have to say, if I should have put Russell rather than, yeah, but anyway, I moved to Spain, moved, sorry, I moved, not going in, to Spain in 1988, right? Next sentence, okay, Russell lived in, Crete for, or Russell also lived in Crete, yeah, for eight months, okay, super quick, I can make these activities, yeah, okay, and then, you know, the third one, so look how quick I can make that, remember, to share that activity, obviously, I can print it out if I was doing that in class, but if I was going to share that, I just click on share, click on set assignment, click on start and copy that link. So you could always do a presentation and then set this for the homework and perhaps share it on Google Classroom or share it on Edmodel or something like that. So WordWall is really worth learning. WordWall, guys, is free up until five activities. But when you use those five activities, you can use them again and again. You can, you can go into those activities, all right, and change them, adapt them for another group or another class and use the same game again with a different class. Now, if you want to be really cheeky, do what I did. I had two email accounts and I logged in. So I had 10 free games and I was using it with 10 free games for a long, long time until eventually one of my videos about WordWall got played, I don't know, 10,000 times or something like that. And the company contacted me and said, oh, we're so happy you're giving us free publicity. We will give you a free account. So I have to confess that now I have a free account. But for a long time, I didn't have a free account. I just was logging in with two different email addresses, five games on one, five games on the other. Okay. 
and um, that uh, is Word War. It's really worth learning about. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing and come back now into my presentation, guys. So hopefully that's given you a little bit of of an idea. Okay, gives you a bit of an indication of what you can do with that technology. Lots of fun, great for a topic. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you one more. It's kind of related, but it's not. It works in a slightly different way than Google Earth. But another one that I've used, this is even more kind of specific, but you can use Google Earth, but you could also use Google Maps. In fact, Google Earth is kind of using a bit of Google Earth and a bit of Google Maps. It actually links the two together if you want it to. But I often use Google Maps as well. Um, and again, same sort of idea because it allows you to personalize things. One thing about working with Google Maps is, and we're just really quickly jumping now, all right? One thing about working with Google Maps is, is that you can be really specific. So let me give you an example of what I mean by that. So if I just come down to here, again, I'm going to do another screen share. I'm just going to jump off. And I've got a Google Maps, I think, on the screen already. Let's have a quick look here. I've got it. Yeah. Okay. So here we are. All right. So let's imagine... OK, I'm going to write 23 please priest. Lee Road Mitchum. OK. And off we go. And I should even be able to drag again. So I get a picture here incredibly. All right. But if I drag my little man to where it says I get it there. Watch what happens. We actually come down and that my guys that is where i was born so <laughs> incredibly it freaks me out that i can do this uh, um but yeah i can and that is the house that i was born in i was actually born in that room now on in uh so that it's incredible that you can kind of show people these things that are so personally to so personal to you yeah so this this is hardly changed at all typical you know it's typical um terraced house that i was built born uh, in and as you can see this road there is no road so when we were kids and there were very few cars around this was a great place for playing football because it was very safe you'd only get one or two cars around and my school if i just pop up here literally to the end of the road OK, so I can do that as well. Incredibly. My school was just down here on the right hand side. So that's how I used to walk to school uh, just by walking down here. There's some houses here now. But before, actually, there was a professional football stadium there. There were not professional, semi-professional football stadium. It was called Tooting and Mitcham. So I live right near to the football stadium. And when I was a young boy, I used to go and watch Tooting and Mitchum play football as well. And um, my school was just past the football ground. Now they've knocked down the stadium and they've got here now um, uh, houses. But before, actually, there was a football stadium there. OK, super powerful. Uh, these these technologies of kind of bringing things to life. So, you know, think about that one as well, because it can be Google Earth is nice as kind of contextualized maps, etc. But um, Google, uh, that's called Google Maps, is really powerful if you want to go to a really specific place. And um, as you just saw me do then, you can literally write in a specific, you know, actual place, put it into here and, and, and it will find that place. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, for example, let's see, just, just let's see if I put in orange, just one, one more to show you what I mean. Go, sorry, orange primary school yeah okay let's see if that oh in fact it's not gonna come up with it is it orange primary school mission let's have a look. it might have been changed the name of it might have changed see so now it's perhaps not there actually it's not coming up anymore so maybe it's re been renamed the school anyway but you, you know you can do really specific ones i've certainly know that my middle school's there because i've done a presentation using my middle school as well so that's again a really lovely technology to use if you're thinking of kind of building up this this idea of really kind of personalize the learning okay being aware of those types of um technologies okay right guys let's get back to our presentation okay and then i'm gonna i'm gonna show you a couple more things in terms of at the moment topics and ideas that we can work on and i just want to show you a few little things um how are we doing for time i must admit we're getting a little bit slower than i wanted to so 
Right, okay, let's see if I can get, I'm having the same problem again. When I'm coming back onto here, it's not coming back to my presentation immediately. So let me just see if I can get it up again. Let's just try one more time. Let's, let's get it up on the screen. Transmit, basic, good. Okay, right, lovely. Right, so I was trying to give you a bit of inspiration there. Okay, so really showing you a few technologies that I often use when I'm trying to get my students to do uh, speaking activities, presentations. It's a nice intro into that whole area. We've looked at Google Earth, we've looked at Google Maps as well. Both of those, those work really well. And what I like about those is that they're kind of quite engaging. And that's really one of the things I'm saying, particularly when students are, you know, I've done these in Polish. I'm learning Polish at the moment. And, you know, really, really testing for me. I did one in Google Earth the other day where I took my teacher to see various places. I, I actually took them to see the schools that I'd worked at and I did it all in Polish. Really difficult for me, but it was absolutely brilliant. So great for language practice and of course also great for you know all the language that comes up in terms of connecting the language together, etc. And I've also showed you word wall. Okay. Now one of the things that um I'm going to show you it's one of the things that uh often is really hard when teaching kind of presentation skills is that initial how you contextualize it all how you introduce students a lot of you were talking about this this kind of thing about them learning about all the things that you need to do within a presentation to things that we need to keep clear in our minds for example you mentioned a lot of them things like you know not writing too much text on the screen things like um making sure that you change the variety in your mind think you know in your voice things like looking at your audience things like being well prepared things like saying what you're going to say saying it and repeating it all these kind of little tips and one of the ways that i find useful to do that often is to get students to watch videos uh, where there are there are interesting presentations and then I can get them to watch those videos and then work together to critique the videos, okay? And what I'm going to do is hopefully I'm going to show you a couple of these videos that I like working with, one particularly that I've used time and time and time again, and I'm actually going to play it too because it's a lot of fun, but I'm also hopefully at the same time going to teach you something about YouTube that you might not be aware of, okay? Um, and that's going to hopefully open up your eyes to some of the material that's available on YouTube because there's a lot of good stuff, but also how you can organize that content and um, uh, some really nice things to contextualize. So what I'm looking at particularly here is when it not not the topics now for conversation, and we might come back to those a little for presentations, and we might come back to that later, but more how do we kind of start that process of getting the students aware of all the things that they need to consider when they're do it giving a presentation and one tip i would give you about this is you've got to do it drip by drip you can't make someone instantly into a good presenter you've got to focus on different things it might be being organized it might be the voice it might be the powerpoint slides it might be the structure of the presentation. You've got to always be focusing on different things. What you can't do when it comes to teaching presentation skills is focus on everything. And that is one thing that I've done in the past. I've gone way over the top, bamboozled my students by getting them to think about too many things. So what we're really looking at now is this whole process is going to help our students to really consider how they present and all the techniques that they need to use. So if I just jump off again to just to screen share, I'm really hoping you're going to find this interesting. OK, we're going to jump onto YouTube. So I'm going to jump over to YouTube now. Let me just close a couple of windows down. Uh, might, I'll leave that open because I might come back to that a bit later. We'll say goodbye to Google Earth and we're going to open up um, and, and just come onto, pub, onto YouTube. <clears throat> now, I'm just going to show you something that you might not be aware of and then I'm, I'm going to play you a fun video. Did you know that you can do this in Google? OK, sorry, in YouTube. So I'm going to I'm going to look at, let's say, for example, one thing I like to do a lot is to do. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to write funny presentation because I know something's going to come up that I kind of like, all right? But I'm then going to show you, I'm going to take it to an even further degree. So I like to use humor a lot and I often look for videos that I think are, are kind of going to be funny, okay? And we'll come back to that in a minute. I'm going to show you one that I, lot, I use a lot. So immediately uh, it's going to bring me up some presentations on the screen and there are absolutely thousands of them, okay? There are just masses and masses of these 
presentations okay that we can see okay okay that's the one that i want to use in a minute okay in fact what i'm going to do is i'm just going to duplicate this page and just make sure i've got that one ready okay because we're going to look at that in a minute i'm just going to come back here for now did you know that you could do this though watch this i'm going to click on filters and I'm going to look for really short presentations because often when we're teaching presentations, we don't want to work with material that's too long. So I'm going to click on, say, under four minutes. So now I'm only looking for video presentations that are under four minutes. But actually, another thing that I can do sometimes is I can click as well and I say, well, I want something that's got subtitles. Let, let's do something between four and 20 minutes, actually. But let's also choose something that's got subtitles. So now, so now we've got not only have I searched for YouTube videos, okay, and I don't always use subtitles, but particularly when I'm working with students and lower level students, this can be really interesting. And what I've done is I've chosen videos that are only up to 20 minutes long, and I've also chosen videos that have all got subtitles. Now, why is that so useful? Well, let me just show you a couple of tricks. Hopefully, it'll work with this one. Let's have a click on this one here, and let's see if it's going to work. OK. All right. Brilliant. So we got the subtitles now Now that immediately makes it easy for the students to follow. OK. Particularly if you want to analyze the language. OK. So that's a nice thing. Just learning to filter when you're searching for material. But watch this. I'm going to show you a few other things. Another really nice little trick. Let's say it's a really good video, but it's a bit quick. You can go and you normally can change the playback speed. Now, I do this a lot in Polish because I really like to work with real Polish language and people. So I often will slow the pace of the video down. Okay, so that's one thing that's really useful. And it works pretty well. It starts dragging when you do it too slow, but at 75%, that's really good. So now we've got a video on the screen, right? That we may even play slower, but we've got the transcript as well. But look at this, if I click here, some of them, well, let's have a look. It doesn't always come up because some of them will have the transcript into the video and some of them will have added the transcript into YouTube. So sometimes this won't happen and it hasn't happened on this one. This here has been added by the by the video rather than by YouTube. And I'll, I'll show you the difference in a minute. But straight away, we can play this video and it means that we've got the transcript on the screen as well as the video. Actually, sorry, let me just stop sharing one second, guys, and just make sure that when I screen share that I've got the audio on now because you obviously want to hear it as well. So let's just come back again. I know that I didn't click on that button. So just doing that again. Entire screen. Good. Da, 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 da. Should hopefully. Great. OK. Come back to that. Uh, what I'm doing here. All right. And so remember what I did was I searched for. A video but then I clicked and used the filters to set this up so that I could then search for videos that have only got subtitles so I've got those now there's two types of subtitles all right some subtitles are embedded into the video and some are layered by YouTube and I want to show you the difference because it's quite important this one's been embedded into the video and if I play it is and on behalf of Microsoft we want to thank you for letting us help you brush up on your PowerPoint skills yeah, we asked you to pair up and create a mock PowerPoint presentation. We had now, that, that video is actually quite funny and it's really quite funny. Uh, it's a bit over the top, but it's quite a good one. And I, I have used it in the past. OK, um, but I'm going to come back again. And I just want to I want to just take this a little bit further because the these uh, subtitles, I want to try and show you a different type of subtitle. And I keeping my fingers crossed. Let's try this one here. OK. This entrepreneur brand logo was done by a top adverse. freelancer on Fiverr. Is simply. Just gonna skip I it. have often. Let's have a quick look here and we'll see if this one. Right, lovely. Okay, so I did tell you there are two types of of, of subtitles. Sometimes the subtitles are put into the video. Okay, I can do that when I make my videos, for example. So I actually put the subtitles in the video, but sometimes the subtitles are are, are added afterwards by putting the transcript into youtube and that is fantastic because look what happens if if the person that made this video put the transcript in after you can click on open transcript and you've got the full transcript there and this can be really powerful when you want to analyze the language that students might want to learn to use when they're doing presentations all i did was choose 
open transcript and suddenly I've got the transcript there. And another thing, guys, when I work with that transcript, I can toggle off these numbers if I don't want them now. All right. I can just toggle the timestamps away. And now I've got the complete transcript. And that can be really useful. OK, now, even further than that, watch this. This is something else I love. So not only now am I able to really analyze what this person is saying, but I can actually click and jump to that part and listen. So, for example, let's say I want to listen to this sentence here. I can click on it. And the video will jump straight to that part and then I can click and play. At the same time. Now, if I have actually got the video playing, watch what happens. I am 100 percent in favor of using lighthearted humor in a presentation. And I do it often when I do professional level add humor See, without the big risk. Of I can just click and jump and it will jump to wherever I click. So watch this. I'll do it a little bit now. I'm going to turn the video on and play it and I'm going to keep clicking and you'll see that the video will jump to those different parts. A punchline style. And I do it often when I do professional level and lead your teams to higher levels. Of, and I do it often when I do professional level. There's a lot of bad advice out there in my humble opinion. Add humor without the big risk of a punch super super useful and i've got more for you in a minute guys but that is really really powerful this ability let me just make that point there are two types of transcripts okay transcripts that have been embedded into the video and then obviously there isn't a transcript from youtube simply they've embedded the transcript they've embedded the subtitles directly into the video but then there's another type of subtitles where what you do is you add up the video and then you add the transcript after. And that's what you can see here. When the transcript has been added after the video has been uploaded onto YouTube, that is when you've got access to it by just clicking on this button here, open transcript. OK, so you can open and close the transcript down. And I find that really useful when I am teaching online. OK, I'm going to stop. I'm going to come back. I've got much more to show you here. All right. And I'm going to show you in a minute a lovely video and ask you how you might use this in your teaching and learning. OK, there are. But um, let me just stop sharing and come back onto the screen and just be interested. Was that useful, that ability to use? I'd love to hear for your comments in the chat window of this ability to make use of the transcripts, to be able to search for videos. Uh, that have got subtitles that are a certain length. Did you know that before or was that was that completely new to you? What I've just showed you there, because often I find when I'm working with teachers, they're not aware that the, you can do these things in YouTube. OK, and then we're going to show you in a minute how you can even extract the language from a video. Yeah. So love to get your comments in the chat window and love to get it, Madalena, Eleonora, if there's anyone's got any comments there in the room. I'm going to move this on a bit further. What I'm looking at particularly now is just where you can find content that you can then start to work with, OK, to get your students to watch and say, well, what is good about that or what is bad about that? OK, because these I often use a lot. OK, I use them a lot. I use a lot of video to get the students to watch the video. And I tend to use humor quite a lot, but not always to watch videos and then to them to extract, well, what's good about this presentation or what's bad about it? And build up this toolkit, this toolkit of skills that they need, the ones that you were mentioning earlier, not too much text on the screen, good use of visuals, not, don't be monotonous, be prepared, blah, blah, blah. Claudia, what a lovely comment. Wow, a whole new world. Good, good, good. Claudia, I'm going to take this even further in a minute. I'm really hoping that you're going to find this useful, all right? Guys, have we got any comments in the in the in the in the main room, in the auditorium? Uh, in the comments, yeah. I, I was thinking about uh working with varieties of English, for example, and then uh, or with accents, with different accents, and see the script of it and walking. With that, it will be what amazing. Lovely idea. Lovely idea. So you're really looking there at sort of regional accents and then how they might vary and looking at the script to help yeah. you understand if you've got like a Scottish person or something like that, yeah? <laughs> I, I knew you could bring some Scottish. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, lovely. Good. Some of you know this. I'm really glad to hear some of you teachers do know about this stuff because often I do presentations and I show people this and say, oh, I didn't realize that. You know, a big 80 percent of the room will say, no, actually, I wasn't aware of that. Can I also tell you that a lot of students aren't aware of it either? All right. So uh, don't feel too guilty. OK, because it is, you know, and it's so useful. I'm going to take this a little bit further. Any any love to see any more comments from the chat window? I'm going to take this further, guys, because obviously um, there's a, a lot of useful things here. Um, any more, Madalena, in the, in the main room? Uh, Ideas wise? I think or? so. Okay. But, All right. um, you you uh, you may, may remember that during the lockdown, I found out that um, in our Google Meet uh, lessons online, uh, my students could generate subtitles automatically Correct. for my lessons, Correct. and they used to laugh a lot during my lessons. So I I was so thrilled. Oh, my lessons are so engaging. No, they were laughing because the automatically generated generated subtitles were simply crazy so Aha. i'm very I surprised because your pronunciation is superb according to the <laughs> subtitle so <laughs> okay all right guys let's get back to this because i've got so much to get through and i'm looking at the time and i'm like oh god i've got so much that i wanted to cover let's get back to this this is serious business and i'm going to zoom on a little bit i'm getting the feeling that i'm going in the right direction i really hope i am all right so what i'm trying to give you here is that the, the the idea or, or to collect together really useful videos. Now, this is the secret. I'm going to come back and show you what I mean. So I'm going to jump into the uh, into the sc screen share again. Make sure we got the sound on. And I want to just take this a little bit further for you. All right. Some of you know this stuff. And I'm really sorry for those that do. But I do want to present this because it is really important. There's so much I can show you here. I'm going to just start with a couple of things. Guys, I don't know if you realize you can do this, but for example, let me just, I'm going to, I'm just going to do this really quickly because this is what I do myself. All right. So I often, when I'm doing this a lot, when I'm working in Polish. Okay. So obviously it could be any topic in my case at the moment, I don't do a lot of presentations, but let's just say that um, I, you know, I want this sentence here. Okay. I don't know what this means in my own language, or I want to learn it because it's a useful phrase for me to use in presentations. Okay. Um, I'm just doing this as a really quick example, right? So I'm going to copy that. And what I would do is I'm going to come up to my Google Translate. And you can see that I've already got it set from English to Polish. Okay. Let's imagine, yeah. So I'm going to paste that in. It's going to give me the Polish translation of that. Okay, which I can also listen to. Oto najczęstsza sytuacja, jaką widziałem. Okay, it's a bit above my level in Polish, to be honest with you. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on this button here. And that has now saved that phrase. Now, let's imagine I'm going to go back to my video again. So imagine what we're doing is we're extracting useful phrases that we could use in our presentations. So we're looking really at functions here. Okay, so let's say, for example, this phrase here. I think, right, yeah, that's really a good, useful phrase. I really want to learn that. And this is exactly what I do in Polish. Okay, I choose a topic and then I build up my language around that. Okay, and then I bring it into Google Translate. And you'll see why in a minute. Jump over to Google Translate. I'm going to paste that one in as well. OK, so now I've got two. OK, and again, I can listen to the Polish version. To naprawdę wysokie ryzyko i naprawdę niska nagroda. Right, OK, that one I could actually just about understand in Polish as well. OK, so now I'm going to click on that. I've added that. I'm just going to do this a couple more times because I want you to understand how powerful this is. All right, watch what I'm going to do. It will make sense in a minute. I'm going to click one and we'll just take one more. OK, let's say um, that's um, this one here. All right, I'm just doing this very randomly. I would, if I was doing this with my students in class, I would be saying to them, right, choose five phrases from the presentation that you think are really useful and that you would like to use in your own presentation. OK, so we're looking at kind of functions, the yeah, language that could be useful to them. I'm going to put this into, into it as my third one. OK, and again, always remember to click on this. Now, this is where the magic starts. If I click here, I can see all the saved sentences that I've currently got between English and Polish. Now, I know sometimes the translations are not perfect. I know that because my wife checks them, but actually about 99, 98% of the time in Polish, and they're really good. And when they even are wrong, she says, ah, it's not that, it's not quite right, but it's not bad. 
with the high frequency languages, particularly if you're taking sort of schematic words. So in other words, lock sort of phrases that we use a lot in presentations, they will generally be translated pretty well. This tool has helped me a lot, but watch this. I'm going to click here now on my save sentences. And actually, I've already got a load of sentences that I've been saving recently. OK, look, I can see them down here. So these are these are ones that I just because I was studying Polish the other day. And these were the ones that I want. In fact, there's too many of them. I'm going to take those last ones off because those aren't really sentences I want to learn. All right. So I'm just going to the last three that I've done. You can see here all the current sentences that I want. I want to learn. Now, what I do when I build up a certain number of phrases. Now, in all honesty, I've got too many at the moment, but I'll do demonstrate this. Watch this, guys. This is magic. I'm going to click here, just one button click. Export. OK, and I click on import the data and immediately it gives me all of those sentences that I'm currently learning in Polish. And in English. OK. Now, let me just take a subset of them because I normally wouldn't make this many, to be honest with you. I would normally have about 10, 12. So let's just sort of say most of the time, occasionally I do a word on its own, but normally I'm always doing sentences, okay, or short phrases. Let's say I'm just going to copy those. I'm just going to copy that. Now, normally, yeah, I'm just going to show you that. So I've just literally just all I've done is saved. I remember I was saving them in Google Translate and then I said save in Google Sheets. Now I'm going to go to Quizlet, and I'm guessing quite a lot of you, because your language teachers will know what Quizlet is. Okay, go to Quizlet, and in Quizlet, all I'm going to do now is click on Create Study Set, and let's imagine that this was useful phrases for presentation. So I'm going to call it useful phrases for presentations. Okay, and all I'm going to do now is click on Import, and I'm going to paste in all of those sentences. And in seconds, I've made a new set of cards in Quizlet that I can now start playing all the games with. Because Quizlet, once you create the cards, you've got the words in Polish, the words in English, the words in... Some of you might not like translation as a way of working. I've changed my mind about translation. Uh, I've studied various languages. And the more I, I find translation does help me, I'm not anti-translation. Um, I'm not saying I do it all the time in the classroom. I try to do my classes as much as I can in English, but I do kind of work with translation, uh, particularly for homework. Now, I've got all these act I've got all these cards here. I've got them all here and I can play games with them now. OK, I can start to play all sorts of games with these cards with my students. So that what what's brilliant about working with um, with this is that once you've made those games and if I now come back here, OK, to um, my home and just sort of show you, you know, I've got useful presentations. I can click on there and I can start to play the different games that are available in Quizlet. It just literally just takes me a few seconds to make those cards. And then I've got available to me all the different games that are, are, are available. And I'm guessing most of you in Quizlet will kind of know, you know, you've got learn flashcards. You know, I'll, I'll just show you the first one. So you, you take a uh, click on once you've made a set of cards, you can play all these different games. So let's just look at flashcards. So in flashcards, Mamy for example, wiele I've got the I've got the, the phrase in Polish. I can click on there and it's going to give me the same phrase in English. I can click on options so I can say I want the audio on and I want to answer with English. So I always start by doing that first by, because it's much easier to listen in Polish and then try to translate. And I can even click on advanced features. And sometimes I do this. I, I, I slow down the, the speed of the Polish. OK, but I turn the audio off for English because obviously I, I'm fairly my English is not bad. So if I went to the next phrase now. Okay. Je przy OK, so they were selling them by the roadside. OK, selling them off by the road. So that's good. So I went on a long walk, a long hike. All right. Szczególnie tęskni za chodzeniem po polach. Um, especially I miss walking in the fields. Yeah, across the fields. Okay. Yeah, my Polish is not bad, is it? It's coming on. So this is what I do. I'm 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 searching for videos on YouTube. I'm extracting the language by using the transcript. I'm putting it into Google um, Translate so that I've got a whole record of all the words. And then once I've got about 10 new words, 
I then shift them into Quizlet and I play games with them. And then what I often do is I'll go back and watch the original video that came with this. So I will go back again a couple of weeks later and maybe play the video again and see, right, do I understand more about it? So this can be a really powerful way of focusing on specific language that you want to use in a YouTube video or from a YouTube presentation. OK, and it's something really, really easy to do. You can either obviously you could have I could have selected all of the words if I wanted to. All right. What you need. Yeah, I could have selected all of the words. I only selected in a subset because I don't like to study 27 words, for example. That's a bit too many. So 10, 12, 15 words maximum when I do these activities. So that's a really powerful thing that you can do, particularly if you're working in the area of language teaching. That can be very, very powerful, how you can link working with YouTube and uh, Google Translate and then Quizlet. Now, if I go back, and I'm going to show you one other thing that teachers don't realize. And I think afterwards, you better take a break. Uh, we've already gone on for an hour and a half. <laughs> Is that, I uh, watch this. Let's say I'm trying to collect together funny presentations. All right. So I'm going to click on, sh I'm going to click on save. And I'm going to click on create a new playlist. And I'm going to call this playlist funny presentations. All right. Funny presentations. Okay. And I click on create. Because I want to save that presentation, all right? Let's imagine that I really like this one. It's really funny, okay? Which it is. I'm going to show you in a minute. Now, let's imagine that a couple of weeks later, I'm looking on the internet, and I come across another funny presentation. And I think, oh, yeah, this, this presentation's great. I'm going to save this in my playlist. A playlist is a collection of videos you've saved on one topic because you might want to use them again. So I, I, I found the video and I thought, oh, yeah, I like this one. So I click on save. I find my playlist, funny presentations. I click on it. Now that video has been saved in that playlist. Let's imagine it's a few weeks later and we found another presentation that we like. OK, this one here, for example. All right. Mr. Dr. B, B, the great English art scholar, <laughs> is here. Wonderful presentation. Brilliant to use this particular one as well. When we're talking here about ex facial expressions, etc., where well, he's an absolute genius. So I love this one. And this one might be something I want to no use. Notice also that this one's got subtitles. Great. This could be really good. You've even got, guys, oh, no, this one's the subtitles have been placed in the video. So there's no transcript, unfortunately. However, I want to save this one into my funny presentations. Now I've got it. Now, why is that useful? Well, I'll tell you why, because one day I log on to YouTube and I think, oh God, I need those videos, those funny presentations. I've got a lesson today. Click on your channel. Over on the left-hand side, you will see a playlist always at the top. And in that playlist, you will see all of your playlists. Now notice how many playlists I've got. I make playlists for everything absolutely everything like i've got them for polish past tense polish grammar songs to learn on my guitar inspiration normally yeah um i can find my playlists and obviously the one that i want today is funny presentations i've got to look for that one hopefully i can find it let's have a look if i come down here a minute okay i think i've clicked in sorry i've jumped over to the i've logged into the onto the wrong um uh, the wrong channel, YouTube channel, actually. Sorry, yes, I have. Hang on, let me just check. Okay, sorry, a minute. sorry about that, guys. Let me just make sure because I've got various YouTube channels, and I think I've 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 uh, confused, uh, jumped onto the long one. Yeah, let me switch channels. Sorry. Okay, let's go to the run. That's that's the one we want. Okay. Okay, so these playlists are really, really useful to me. Okay, the fact that I've got access to Hi, these this playlists. Is from teachertrainingvideos.com and welcome to my YouTube Sorry, channel. Okay, so making playlists, and that means that I just to give you a quick public speaking here, I've got some video. Yeah, so I've got this one here on public speaking, and I've got these four videos all together already so that I can immediately find them. So it's a great way of all, and the lovely thing about this as well, if you wanted to, you could give this playlist, you can share this playlist with your students so that then they can access that playlist as well, okay? So you also have that option as well, play all. So I could click here 
and it's going to play through all of those videos and i could share that link with my students and they would then be able to watch all of the four videos that i've added to that particular playlist so creating playlists is really really useful in terms of um, being able to organize together content that you find on youtube that you might want to work with and you might have a playlist for example a, a playlist that says good interesting starts to presentations another one that says a whole collection of videos that are good use of powerpoint another one might be good presentations for teaching language skills and you could build up whole collections of videos because there's so much material on youtube okay remember what you can let's say like a good presentation example let's just put that in as an as a, as a search term okay and then i might start looking through and watching some of these videos and finding some good presentations and create a playlist called good presentations it doesn't take a long time and remember you can click on the filters and I could say, right, I only want presentations that got subtitles because that might be something really useful. And now all the presentations that you're looking at have got subtitles that could be really useful to share with your students. OK, so those little digital skills, learning how to search on YouTube, learning how to work with the transcripts, learning how to take the transcripts and add them into Google Translate and then into Quizlet and how you can make a set of Quizlet cards so quickly. And then that incredible ability that I've just showed you there to make a playlist, which is something I am totally obsessed with. Look how many, I mean, because I play the guitar. So look, I've got, you know, best scales, you know, scales work, and then ideas for the Flip Classroom uh, playlist, and singing blues, and even my French studies, because obviously I've just studied French as well. Uh, you know, my guitar studies, all, yeah. Polish Present Simple. This was a brilliant playlist I made. I collected together all these videos uh, where, the where people are speaking in the Present Simple in Polish. And when I was studying it, what I used to do is just click on Play All, and I'd just listen to them. Listen to the first one, and it played the second one, and it played the third one, and it played the fourth one, and played the fifth one. Really useful. And, of course, you can go straight to any of the videos individually. You don't have to play the whole lot. So if you organize together playlists of having useful playlists for example funny presentations presentations with good introductions presentations uh, that are inspiring you know etc you could collect these together in playlists and you've got them that you can make use of all the time guys we've been going on now already yes have you, have you got a playlist sorry so got a playlist to... for time management also Yes, sorry about that, guys. Well, I knew that would happen. It always happens with me. Okay. Yeah. We're running a bit late for our uh, break. Sorry, sorry, right. interrupting you like this. It's so, like to no. bring some humor yeah. to class, you know. Um, okay, shall we? Shall we say we have our twenty minutes break? Perfect moment shall for we? having the twenty minute break. Okay, okay. and we'll come back and, and Your move favorite on to time the next of the topic. Day. Okay, after the perfect cuppa. Okay, we'll meet again in 20 yep, so minutes. Then. Start about 20 past again, 20, 25 past, about 25, 25 past. 25 past. Yep. Okay, lovely. All right, guys, hope this is useful to you anyway. Yep. It was, was so inspiring. See you then. Yep. Well, we were commenting on the fact that Russell is demanding. He's so energetic that he needs a lot of energy by our side as well. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> okay. It was so inspiring. Brilliant. Okay. I'm really good. It's very hard to do this. I must say, um, I, I did say to you at the beginning, I've never actually done a hybrid lesson myself, even though I've been working with lots of teachers at King's College University. I kind of have a consultancy contract, uh, contract there helping teachers and uh, a lot of them have been doing, doing um, hybrid. I must say it's, it's quite hard. It's quite hard. I'm glad I've not had to do it that often. Anyway, guys, listen, we're back. Um, uh, that's all, it. So, yeah. so I, I, I'll interrupt you again, but I see you're still on the screen. Ah, I'm still on the screen. Hang on, what's going on? What do you mean, I'm still on the screen? Which is definitely not the image we have of you. Right, so hang on. So you're... <laughs> okay, let's have a look, let's have a look, let's have a look, let's have a look. 
Ah, I'm frozen. Okay, let me see if I can refresh. I'm frozen. <laughs> One moment, one moment. Let's see if this is so open up the chat window. You are fine now. Yeah, okay, good, lovely. You, I can hear you as well. Okay. Right. I've tried to save the best to last, okay, to the second part. So hopefully um what I'm gonna show you in the second part, I believe is more interesting in a way than the the, the the one I showed you in the first. I hopefully you found that stuff really interesting. Um, and Madalena, if I can ask you to do me a favor, can you just stop me five minutes before the end? Because I'm gonna finish by telling you, I'm gonna do a little presentation for everyone at the end. And I'm okay. gonna tell you the most incredible story that happened to me. I've got it all prepared for you, okay? And Are you sure you just need five minutes? Yeah, it's only a very short story. Ten <laughs> minutes. Give me ten. Give me ten. Ten minutes ten before. Minutes. Okay, um, I will. Okay. I will. Um, funny enough, someone who knows this story, who's an ELT writer, has told me that they're, gonna, they're planning on using it. So um, we, this might be a story that's going to get published in the future. But anyway. Right, guys, we're going to start by watching a video, okay? And someone's already done a playlist. And just to make that point, I'm just going to come back here onto the... Um, uh, thing and I'll put the uh, screen share on. I'm going to jump over here. Just wanted to point something out to you. Should be able to do this. Let me just see if I can. Yeah, I can. All right. This is the this is the handout I've got for you. All right. So uh, this is what we're going to be looking at this afternoon. But how to use WordWall, how to use Google Earth, how to make playlists, and how to search on the YouTube, and then how to link Google with Quizlet. So everything that I'm showing you. All right. At the end, there's a handout. You just get this handout, and you can click on any of those videos, and you can watch those videos, and um, they will help you to do all the things that I've been showing you today. So you don't have to worry about um, not knowing the technologies, all right? Because you've got those videos there, and that's going to make that a lot, lot easier. So, I'm going to play this video to you guys. Um, I better make sure that I'm sharing the audio. This is what I'm going to do is a little challenge. I'm going to just play this video all the way through. And I'm going to question I'm going to ask both to the audience, excuse me, the people in the auditorium and everyone on chat. Um, how might you use this video? I've used this video probably more than any other single video I've used on the Internet. I discovered this. It, do you know what? This video was actually uploaded the year that YouTube started. So imagine that. And I've been I must have used this honestly hundreds of times, this one particular video. And it's about presentations. It's called funny presentations. And the, what they ask you is how many errors can you find? But there might be other ways that you decide that you would like to use this. Now, just before I start presenting, let's just double check that I am screen sharing the sound. Otherwise, you won't hear it. And um, just make sure that we've definitely got the sound shared. We have good, 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 good. Click on there, click on there. Come over to the funny presentation. I'm gonna go, we can actually, let's go put this in cinema mode. And I'm gonna play this video to you. Hopefully the ad's gonna finish very quickly. HD save 10 hours studying with this Chrome extension. But no, by- Let's go put it right back to the beginning, sorry. Is this mine? Is it? Is it on? Check, check, one, two, check, check, over, one, two, three. Look, I am your boy. Okay, so. You, you need. Basically, I am here uh, from the Fun Lion 
uh, incorporated uh, business. As you can see, the fun, the f well, who's, who's got the phone on? Okay. Hello? They, they make you want to sing a jungle song. In conclusion, I uh, just... Uh, 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 a little help here. Uh, ow. I must have watched that video a hundred times and it still makes me laugh. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Quick question to you all. One, one point I'm making is that I often do presentations where or I focus on content where there's lots of mistakes. I sometimes find that an easier way to teach presentation skills. So I love using that video. How would you use that video? In the chat window, um, love to see your answers. And in the auditorium, if anyone's got any answers, either on bits of paper that they share with you, or if you want to pass the mic around, what would you possibly do with that video? Okay, it's one that I've made a lot of use of in different ways. But I like it a lot because it does this thing that I find useful of kind of focusing on the mistakes rather than showing people what's a good presentation, showing what is a bad one and get them to work it and work it out there. OK, so just be really curious, just give you a couple of seconds to um, to have a look uh, to see if anyone's got any ideas how they might use that. Anyone in the chat window love to see your ideas. How how do you think that that might work as a as a video to watch? I'm a big fan of using video uh, because you can set different contexts. You can have a variety of different presenters. You can have a different variety of different accents. For example, that guy sounded like he was obviously from America. Um, yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Simonetta. Lovely start. I mean, just simply do that. Do that. Yeah. Like, you know, really good. Uh, just what advice would you give them to him or or even five pieces of advice? Sometimes I find it a good idea to keep it restrictive. Five pieces of advice that you uh, would give to that presenter. That that would be a lovely idea. Yeah. Good. Any anything else? Any other any other things um, that you might use that video for? You can find that one on YouTube very easy. Just write funny presentation. It will come up about seventh or eighth on YouTube. But other ones as well. Yeah. Lovely. Okay, Rory, do that. Great. Again, you know. So just five mistakes to focus on. OK, what mistakes does he make? Again, as an attention grabber. OK, lovely. OK. Yeah, lovely. OK, so I this is what I like, Louisa, about this video. It's a great way to introduce the whole topic of presentations and make people realize just how bad they often are at the start. OK, because I think a lot of people think they can. Well, I'm not, I'm not sure about that because a lot of students are very shy and some aren't. But basically, People, it just raises people's awareness of just how bad presenters can possibly be if they don't follow the key rules. So it can be a really nice way of kind of raising awareness. So focusing on the errors. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So I'm listing mistakes. One thing that you could do is, in, is some activity like in Word Wall. So, for example, he knocked the, um, the pencils over. He spoke. He threw a pen in the audience. He knocked over the whiteboard. So I do a language thing sometimes where I even make it a little, not only go through the mistakes, but I get them to match the verb and the object. That can work really well as well. Yeah. Rank the mistakes. Love it. Love it. Great idea. So rank the mistakes or order the mistakes. OK, here's 10 mistakes he made. Can you remember the order that he made them in? Lovely, Christiana. Yeah, really nice idea, that as well. Good. Anything in the auditorium, Madalena? 
Yes, indeed. It could be used not just for teaching presentations, but for teaching prepositions, phrasal verbs, yep. imperative. <laughs> Whoa, someone, you've obviously got some language teachers there in the audience. Exactly, because there's loads that knock over, yeah? That, that kind of thing. So there are, there are quite a few phrasal verbs there, yeah? Through into, well, yeah, through into actually isn't really one, yeah? But there, there are quite a few phrasal ver verbs there with... Um, uh, sing aloud, blah, 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 that kind of thing, all right? So you've got that, yeah? Um, sit on, et cetera. So all sorts of things like that. Great. Rank the I like that ranking one. I really like that as well. But I'm all, the overall point I'm trying to make is often the way into presentations is through humor and through finding nice things on YouTube. But also, I find it much more helpful to focus on mistakes rather than focus on what uh students do or what a good presenter does okay good anyone else any more lovely ideas you're coming across anything else madalena in, in the audience there don't think so okay another right. contribution oh yes we have one right go on, a second then. yeah so i like that ranking yeah. list of mistakes language yeah, uh, yeah. So, uh, i would say to uh, that it would be helpful to categorize the mistakes i mean there are some things that you can think about uh, before the presentation you can organize better before and something happens just uh, in the moment at the moment so absolutely excellent excellent idea categorizing the types of mistakes that he's made because a lot of them are to do with preparation aren't they then other ones are actually to do with the content of the presentation yeah and i'll tell you what's interesting is like did he do anything well because a couple of people say well he did use a prop you know and sometimes i've even said is there anything that we could say that he actually did well in the presentation yeah but um I like those kind of things, and I've used that video many times, and I have to say that video works. For me, it's works quite often as a presentation tool as well. Um, yeah, okay, so that whole kind of thing about not being prepared, which we've all done. I've done it. I've done it, you know. So not being prepared enough for a presentation, and it becomes a complete mess, and I just kind of like that sort of thing again you know making use of youtube and how did i find that video in the first place well searching again for short videos funny short videos funny presentation and search for short so i, I love to make the use of humor really nice ideas and what the point i'm trying to make here is that we've got that kind of checklist of things that we know we've got to teach the students like i know you mentioned them earlier like for example too much text not using their voice properly uh, not looking at their audience, okay, which I'm not doing enough at the moment. I keep looking here on myself rather than looking at the camera. I should be looking at the camera. There's something I don't do right yet very well when I'm talking in Zoom. But those kind of skills that we've got to teach the students, okay, you've got to break those down and you've got to build them up over a period of time. You know, you might even do a whole presentation on how you start a presentation, which is often through the hook through a really good question. There are some really good videos though on YouTube about what a good presentation is where someone has analyzed it. I might be, if I if I get a chance in a minute, I might really be able to quickly uh, show you a couple of those. There's a couple that I really like. Bit higher level, but very, very good. In fact, I'll have a quick look for one in a minute, okay? Okay, lovely. So that's something I use. I'm, I'm a big fan of YouTube. One thing I wanna shift off to now, and I think, uh, a lot of you have mentioned this and I've done a lot of work in this area and that is this whole problem about students being very shy and what I'm going to show you now is and do, talk a little bit about is this whole idea of getting my students to record themselves giving presentations so this can be for homework okay so I'm going to start by just sort of jumping in a little bit to my um, material so let me just jump over here and open up my presentation onto the screen again jump to the part that I want to talk about okay and we'll, we'll come back at that. A lot of the work I do in the area of technology and funny Madalena and I was having a quick discussion before the lesson you know I'm not a big fan of technology in the class you don't see me using masses of technology in the classroom yeah I might use it occasionally like for example 
for Google Earth if I'm going to get my students to present. And of course, I'm projecting things from the from the video. Of course, I'm using that. But I'm not using loads and loads of mobile apps in the class or getting my students to use computers all the time. I generally don't do that. I'm more interested in what we can do with technology outside of the class. So when I'm preparing my lessons and particularly things like presentations, I'm always thinking about what I'm going to do in class and what I'm going to do out of class and how I'm going to link it all together. So when I lesson plan these days, I'm very much lesson planning as if it's one whole. I'm almost thinking about the in and the out of the class as the same thing. It's all part of one whole. Now, I know that's very different to the way that I used to think about teaching before. When I taught before, I used to be, you know, doing my lessons and then at the last minute, open up the workbook and say, well, do exercise five. No, when I'm planning a lesson now, I'm really thinking about this link between what the students are going to do in class and what they're going to do outside of class. And often I'm getting my students to do recordings of themselves doing presentations outside of the lesson. And what I want to do is I'm going to show you the technology that I use for this because it's so simple, it's ridiculous. It's free and it's free for your students to use and your students are going to be familiar with these types of technologies anyway. And there are so many opp opportunities because if we can get our students to it doesn't matter if they prepare and spend ages and ages doing it and then get this recording together and then play it to you in a class or present it in groups, however you want to work with it, you can work with it lots of different ways, but get the students to do the recordings at home because often recording in class is difficult. Sometimes I do get the students to record in class, okay, if I, uh, I'm going to get them to work in pairs or groups and do a recording. Let me show you, first of all, the technology that I use. Um, I'm talking about with the history of this and I remember presenting this work at Aya Tefl. I think that was in 2009. I started my work with these technologies as far back as 2006, 2007. So I was setting homework where I was getting my students to record themselves speaking for homework. And I'm going to just show you the technology. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump over onto uh, the screen capture again. OK, we'll put the sound on for this. I'm going to click on share. Uh, hopefully now I'm going to jump over to a technology here called Screencast-O-Matic. All right. And what we'll do for this one is we'll actually record over a PowerPoint slide so you can actually see this in action. OK, when I do these presentations, I get my students to record themselves speaking. Often I get them to I limit the number of PowerPoint slides they can use. OK, because often what will happen is they will end up doing really long slides. So you limit them to like a recording of two minutes or, you know, or even say like it might be practice how to start a presentation. OK, so you might even just do a recording on something really simple, like just record the first minute of your presentation. So screencast automatic click on record for free click on launch free recorder and this re launches this little thing here which is a free recorder and this now becomes like a little app at the bottom of your screen okay and so I, what i can do now is i can minimize everything in the background okay and what i'll do is i'll open up a presentation i can i can resize this so i can choose any sort of size i want i'm going to actually okay and I'm going to let's imagine I'm going to record. OK, I'm just going to record this first slide of this presentation that I'm going to do for you later on. OK. So look at this, I can literally just click here and then I click on this button here. OK, one of the strangest things that happens is if I write my name into Google, then there are two Russell Stannards. There are two Russell Stannards that are everywhere. And I've just done it today. I've just written my name into Google on Google Images. And you can see here that I'm on the screen. But there's also this other Russell Stannard. OK, so I've just done that recording. I've just clicked on Stop. I'm going to click on Done. I'm going to click on Save. And that recording is already finished. And I'm going to play it back to you now. OK, so your students could do this from home. OK, I'm just going to play. It. OK, one of the strangest things that happens is if I write my name into Google, then there are two Russell Stannards. 
there are two Russell Stannards that are everywhere. And I've just done it today. I've just written my name into Google on Google Images. And you can see here that I'm on the screen, but there's also this other. So look how quickly I can make that video. But watch this. This is absolutely mad. I'm now going to share that video on YouTube. Okay, you don't have to do this. The students could save that now and put it on their computer, bring it into class. But the student could also upload it onto video and then share the link with you or upload it onto their Google Drive and share the link with you. There's loads of ways that they can share it. I'm going to do YouTube simply because it's really fast. So I'm just going to put here, okay, I'm going to write the title. I'm going to call this Russell Presentation. Now, I'm going to click on Publish. And straight away, that video is being uploaded onto my YouTube channel. Now, if you have a Gmail account, guys, you have a YouTube channel. The two are connected together. Every Gmail account comes with a YouTube channel. And that is it. That video is now on YouTube. Now, I uploaded that video, by the way, as unlisted. So nobody can find that video. Only people with the link. So I'm going to copy the link. And just as a little test, I can't do this to the people in the audience, but I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to come back to our presentation in a minute. OK, so I'm just going to come back to where we're presenting. And guys, for everyone in the chat window, I'm just going to share that link with you. Can you tell me if that video is working? Can you just click on it on that and tell me if that video is, is working? Just yeah. OK, so look how quickly I could get my students to record a presentation. OK, remember you were saying to me how a lot of students are a little bit reluctant to talk in public. You know, this you, you have to understand. I've been teaching since 1987. You know, my first job was in, on the island of Crete. For me to say to my students, no, your homework is to record yourself giving a presentation. This is absolutely groundbreaking. OK, and it's so simple to do and it's using a free technology and it literally just takes a few button clicks and they've got the video up there. Now, they could save that video on their computer and bring it in, but they could also save that computer if they've got Gmail on their G drive and then share the link with you. OK, uh, you start to think about the possibilities in terms of the types of activities that you could be getting your students to do. You could introduce a topic around presentation, you know, doing a presentation, perhaps through a YouTube video, and then get the students to prepare that presentation in class. And then for homework, you get them to do the recording. OK, so you've now linked your in class and your out of class together and you've made it into a whole lesson that goes from one part to the other. And then what you can do is perhaps in groups, get the students in back in classroom to analyze the videos and give each other feedback on them. Now, you have to be very focused when you give that feedback. You can't ask your students to give feedback on everything. They need to have something really specific. Are you going to focus, for example, on the introduction? Are you going to focus on how much writing they put on the PowerPoint slide? Are you going to focus on the images they use in the PowerPoint slide? You need to think about how you're going to get the students to reflect on, on those recordings. But this method is very, very powerful. OK? OK, great for the flip classroom. OK, Flipgrid will also work as well. Flipgrid, the trouble with Flipgrid is that the students are, you know, they've got to log in. If, if I'm right in saying they've got to log in with either Microsoft or Google. Am I right in saying that, Simonetta? I think I am. Because I used to teach Flipgrid, but then I kind of got fed up with it because this technology I've just shown you now, that the students do not need to reveal their email addresses or anything of the kind. They can literally use this tool without even logging in. OK, it's that, that's one of the really powerful things about working with Screencast-O-Matic. And remember, they can talk over a PowerPoint slide as well. OK, um, I think you can do the same in, in Flipgrid, if I remember rightly. But I myself, I'm a big fan of using Screencast-O-Matic. All right. I just want to go through a couple of things about it. Brilliant for the Flip Classroom as well, this technology. If you want to make videos yourself, OK, then really, really powerful. So you can do videos. You could make a video where you did a good presentation or a bad one. So, well, what mistake? did I make okay so you could, could make your own video but it's the ease of using this technology let's just go back and look at it again and I'm going to give you a couple of other hints all right so let's just go back to to, to, to do doing a screen share okay so um so yes I mean flip grid, grid definitely look, could be a possibility I've, as I said the one big advantage of using this technology is that there's no I'm not signed in guys look sign up for free I'm not signing in 
I don't need to sign in to use this technology. So there's no nothing like that. So this is super quick. I launched the free recorder. Now, the first time you launch that recorder, there is a teeny app that you your, your computer will download. It takes like about five seconds. So it's it's not instant, okay? It's like a little app that you need to kind of launch, that you need to launch. And the first time that you do that, it will kind of take a couple of seconds. Once it comes on the screen, it is it is a, a, like a little separate thing from the internet. So you can then close all your internet site down, open up whatever you want to present in the background. Now I'm gonna show you another technique that I use a lot, okay? So obviously getting my students to record themselves talking over PowerPoint presentations is brilliant and I'm gonna show you some examples. But I'm gonna show you another technique that I use quite a lot as well. And what I'm gonna to do to show you this is I'm gonna just jump over to my pictures and I'll try, I'll do this with, um, Let's see if I've got some pictures that I could actually work with. Yeah, okay. These are this isn't going to be brilliant. Oh, yes, it is. Yeah, this will work. Okay, this will work perfectly. Okay. So what I've done is you can probably see on the screen I've got three pictures here. Now, brilliant isn't when you work with images, and let me just click on the first one. I'm not sure if these are all the right size. It's probably best when you work with big images, but you'll get the idea. All right. So you get the idea. All right. This isn't going to work perfect because the, the images aren't big enough, but it will it will do. I'm going to record myself talking about this image, then this one, and then this one, okay? And I can do that, okay? So I'm just going to start with the first image. I'm going to click on the on the record button. I'm doing a presentation about, about London, okay? So this is the first picture that I want to show you of London. This is uh, Westminster Bridge, and this is Big Ben. The reason that... that uh, Westminster Bridge is so significant in London, as well as being near to the Houses of Parliament, is that it's actually the place where we measure the distances. So when we say, for example, that from London to Manchester is 250 miles, then the point is actually here. And there's a special plaque when you walk across Westminster, there's a plaque that says this is point zero. Now I'm going to move on to the second uh, building that I want to talk about and it's the London Eye. Now the London Eye is very interesting because it was originally called the Millennium Will and the idea was that it was only going to be there originally, the original plan, for a year. Now it's 2021, that's 21 years later and the Will is still very popular and still going strong. So many of the things that the Labour government did at the time of the millennium were a disaster, but that one was definitely not a disaster. The next uh, building I want to talk about is the Tower Bridge. Now, why am I talking about Tower Bridge? Well, Tower Bridge is the last bridge in London. After that, there isn't another bridge for a long, long way, getting right outside of the centre of London. But perhaps the most interesting thing about Tower Bridge is that you can go inside. There is actually a museum now. And another little tip about Tower Bridge is if you walk across the bridge and go onto the street and walk under, there is a pub, very important for you that like beer, underneath Tower Bridge, okay, if you didn't know that. So there we are. Great little idea. Get your students to line up some pictures that they can then record themselves talking about. Now, that was one minute, 52 seconds. Now, that was a pretty long presentation. One thing I've discovered is that you do not need your students to uh, record for a long time. I do this kind of work in Polish, OK, to practice my fluency in Polish. And I prepare it and then I do a recording and I find even a minute in Polish, even though my level now is sort of like ooh, maybe 2A, OK, maybe just about maybe I'm being a bit exaggerated. Maybe it's only 1B. But anyway, it's 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 coming on. But it's incredible how little time you use uh, you need. OK, and I've made big mistakes in the past, allowing my students, for example, to record for way too long. And it makes it really difficult to give the feedback. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Now I'm going to click on done. The video, uh, click on save, and that video is immediately ready. There it is. And I'm going to just play back a few seconds at London, okay? So this is the first picture that I want to show you of London. This is uh, Westminster Bridge, and this is Big Ben. The reason that, that uh, 
Westminster Bridge is so significant in London. Okay, so the, the, the video is perfect, yeah? No problem at all. Now, I could upload that onto my Google Drive straight away. The only reason I'm not going to do it, guys, now is because Google Drive is not a video repository. So it does take longer to actually turn it into a video. It might take as long as 10 minutes before that video was long. If I upload it onto YouTube, where remember if you have a gmail account you have a youtube channel you can upload videos you just have to log in with your G gmail details and then you've got access i click here and i'm going to call this russell talking about london russell talking about london okay better spell it with a capital l because i'm amongst language teachers and notice i'm setting it as unlisted teachers always get this wrong you think oh i've got to send it as private no Private means you need to specify who can watch the video. Set it as unlisted. That means you cannot find the video on YouTube and only people that have link can watch the video. I click on publish straight away. Now, again, we're talking about digital literacies here. Really useful skill for your students to learn, but also for you to learn as a teacher. Um, I don't know if any of you uh, know my work. Um, I know that Madalena mentioned at the beginning that I'd won some awards. Well, I won my awards for using this technology, but for giving feedback to my students. And I might, might very quickly talk about that as well, because it could also be useful for what we do. OK, so click on uh, copy link and I'm going to click on done and I'm going to click on stop sharing. OK. I'm going to come back to our presentation and I'm going to do the same thing. Little test now, guys. Um, I'm going to share the link to that YouTube video and I just want you to verify that that works. All right. This is magic literally in front of your eyes. I'm making these videos and uploading them onto YouTube and they're now accessible by everybody in just a, a few seconds to do this. A really, really easy tool to use. OK, screencast o -matic can be very powerful if we want to get our students to record themselves doing presentations at home. OK, yeah, it could be. Yeah. yeah OK, it, it might take uh, 15, 20 seconds before that video is ready, because obviously that was a longer one. I did a longer presentation there. OK, but I just want you to realize, you know, how powerful this stuff is. OK. So everyone else, can anyone else just confirm? Yeah, brilliant. It's working. All right. So bang, I can make these videos or my students can make these videos. We talk a lot about digital competencies, these skills that our teachers and students need to be able to do these kind of interesting types of things. There's not masses of them. There's not you don't have to learn how to computer program and blah, blah, blah. But basic skills in working with playlists and searching on YouTube and being able to use some of these really, really useful tools. This, by the way, is the same tool that's been used for all the content that's on the flipped classroom. So when people are making videos and learning content for the flipped classroom, then this is absolutely unbelievable. OK, right. I'm going to take this a little bit further now. I'm just going to take show you so, a couple of examples. So one thing that I'm saying is that there are there's there's kind of for me i'm thinking in a big kind of blocks all right the, how i introduce the topic whether it means the general topic of doing a presentation or public speaking we use both terms yeah then the preparation helping the students to prepare their preparation presentation so the input that i'm going to give them at that stage and it's at that stage that we give them the, the things like don't use too much text. Look at your audience when you're speaking. Think about the tone of your voice. But remember, bit by bit. So you might do a session where you are only looking at how you do an introduction. Or you might do a session where you're only looking at what uh, the students put on the screen in terms of the actual PowerPoint slides. Don't try to do it all. OK, then the students can actually practice and, de and, and deliver their video and then you can do some reflection on it. OK, and the thing about reflection, and if I get the time, I'm going to talk about this at the end. I know I'm, I'm running short of time is that really it's about getting the students to analyze their own videos. That's really what we want to do. OK, rather than us always feeding in the information, it's much more cognitive if they're reflecting. It's much more connected to critical thinking if they're evaluating their own recordings or working in small groups with very clear guidelines and evaluating their own recordings and thinking about how to improve them.
okay so i love the idea of getting my students of, of my students recording themselves this is really powerful now let me show you a couple of examples of things i've done okay so let me and you, i've made many mistakes when i've done this by the way because i started this very early okay and so this was like one of the first things that was you know soon because i'm not a big technology fan really i'm I, I, what it is about technology for me is that you know i'm not one of these guys that's got the latest this and that I, I, i'm not like that so i don't even play computer games but i straight away saw when i started to see technology like wow you know i can really change a few things about the way i teach but particularly outside of the class because in the class i've got my students working in pairs and groups and doing all these activities I, I wasn't that worried about that I was more worried about what it was they were doing outside of class that's where I thought I can really have an impact so for me the most interesting things about technology are often what I can get my students to do outside of the class and that's why I would encourage them to use something like screencast matic so let me give you a couple of examples screen sharing sometimes when I use these technologies to screen share a video can be a little bit tricky but we should be able to do this guys so let's let's just see if we can can manage it all right and I've actually got some real examples of my students working and these some of these are pretty old as well so let hopefully that you're going to be able to see this the first one i'm really proud of this one because i think this was one of my first ever i was using a technology at the time called brain my brain shark i don't use my brain shark anymore anymore it was one of the really early technologies okay this is a student her name's michelle she's she was studying with me at warwick university she's doing ielts preparation at the time she was around about Five. Now, to get into Warwick University, you needed to have 7.5. So you had to be really high level. So she was doing like a year preparation. And she was in a group of students uh, where I got my students to record themselves presenting. And I'm going to ask you a question. What do you think I focused on after the presentation? OK, so she does. So you imagine this, you know, they all go home. They do their recordings. I got it wrong because I didn't restrict them enough. I should have told them to do much shorter recordings. Two, three minutes would have been enough. But the idea was lovely. OK, so we did a lot of preparation work in class. They go home, they do their presentation. And then what I did was I didn't mark their work. I then put them into groups in the next lesson and got them to play their recordings together and discuss certain things. OK. But I, own, I kept it very minimal on what I asked them to focus on. Now, I'm just going to play you the video. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, security and privacy of electronic business. Uh, I'm Michelle. And uh, if you have any question, please keep it until the end of my presentation. Thank you. Uh, my presentation can be divided into two parts. The part, first part is the introduction of the security and privacy. The second part is the solution to these problems. Okay, let's move on to my presentation, part one. Okay, let me ask you a question first. Have you ever shopped on internet? Yes, I think uh, most of us have the experience of shopping on internet. Uh, this picture is the uh, payment information of Body Shop. I think this um, is very familiar to us. Here is the credit card number, and also the you need to enter the security card. Se okay, I mean I love that. I was so amazed at myself when I when I did that activity with Michelle and with that group of students now because it was one of the very first times that I'd got my students to record themselves for homework and I was like wow this is a real revelation um that and what I did on this particular one is that they recorded it and they uploaded it onto Moodle you know if you've got access to something like Google Classroom or Moodle or Red Model then the students can upload those recordings there that, that's something you'll have to work out depending on where you're teaching. But this whole idea of getting your students to do a recording can be really, really powerful. So that's one example. I'm going to play you another one. And this one's really interesting because this is actually a completely different way to use. Now, again, I was using the same technology, my brain shark. These days I use screencast o -Matic. I've been using screencast o -Matic now for, oh, God, maybe eight, nine years. OK, so I'm using the same technology. But at the beginning, I was using this another technology called My Brain Shock. There are hundreds of these technologies around. But Screencast-O-Matic, I like it because you don't have to log in. You just go on the website, 
open up the recorder and do the recording and then save it or on your computer or save it on, on YouTube or save it on G Gmail. What I did in this activity is a bit different, is that I sent, I gave the students a PowerPoint presentation with some questions on to discuss. So I, I was switching it. I was kind of forcing them in this time in a way, I was almost giving them a specific you know, set of questions discussed. Now, I didn't, the PowerPoint presentation that I gave them to, to talk over was just a set of questions, but it could have easily been, you know, something that we prepared in the class so that everyone had the same presentation. That could be quite an interesting way of working, okay, because then you can compare, okay, or even give them a model to work from. But let me just show you this, but also listen to the comment that Celia makes at the beginning. I didn't ask her to say this, but just listen to what she says. Hi, so this is Cecilia. Today I'm going to talk about my feedback or reflection on a wall visual activity we did last Friday. Um, before I answer any of your questions, I would really like to say that my brain shark is a great tool for practicing speaking because I genuinely believe I have been recording for this like a million times. And please forgive me if I am not as fluent as you. What type of language processing took place while the activity was taking place? Well, firstly, we uh, distributed our Okay, I won't play any more. Okay, you get the idea. Funny enough, what I was actually doing in this here was getting them to reflect on the lesson. I was using my previous lesson as a way of getting them to kind of record themselves talking about the lesson and what worked and what didn't. So I was doing it as a kind of reflective activity. But it's a kind of interesting way of working. You don't always have to get the students to do a presentation themselves. You might actually give them the presentation, already one that's pre-produced, and then get them to record themselves speaking. OK, now I'm going to just take this to the to the crazy level, just for those of you that might be absolutely uh, really want to go out there. This is something that I've been experimenting with lately. OK, I've only done my first experiments with this very recently. I have got my students. I've combined the two technologies together. OK, let we could just do a quick example. So let's go back to that um, presentation that we did at the, on, on the other day where I have lived. Remember, we did this earlier. You do realize, of course, that we could record ourselves doing a Google presentation. So what I could do, I don't have to go full screen, of course. I'm just going to make it a bit smaller. I'm going to kind of um, open up. Uh, hang on a minute. Let me just get, I want to get rid of that, all right? So I should be able to get rid of that. I hope like I can. One minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. Why can't I get rid of that? I must be able to. Yes, I can. I'll just click there. That's it. Right, I'm going to click on here, and I'm going to click on Launch Recorder. It's going to open up. There it is. It's already opened up. I'm going to click over to Google. And I'm going to do a little presentation about. So this is Seville. This is Spain, uh, where I was, or Spain, Seville, where I lived. Uh, I lived here between 1988 and uh, 1999. Um, big changes took place in Seville during that period. Um, one of my favourite places in Seville is here, which is called Plata de España. And it was actually built due to an expo, the Expo of the Americas, which I think took place in 1928. Now, if I just stop here a minute and just drop our little man down, we can actually go to the Plata de España and just see what it's like. And zoom down. And there we are. Got another, they get a better picture this time, actually, than the last one. This is a much better picture. OK, I've been recording that. OK, let me just click on that. Let's click on done. Let's click on save and upload. And hopefully in a few seconds that video is done. Let's just see if it's worked. So me recording over a, pa a Google Earth. Now, I've only just started experimenting with this myself, guys. All right. I've not done this a lot in the past, but it's definitely a possibility. So this is Seville. This is Spain, uh, where I was, or Spain, Seville, where I lived. Uh, I lived here between 1988 and, okay, and that's worked absolutely perfectly. And again, I'm not going to do it again, but you could upload that onto, onto YouTube. All right. So screencast o -matic 
is a really powerful tool and getting your students to do recordings either on their own or in groups, but not necessarily a whole presentation at the beginning. You might just start with certain things. I'm going to stop sharing, guys, and just come back again to our, um, our presentation. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes. I've just thrown out loads of ideas. Any comments either from the audience? going to show you something else about that in a minute or from anyone in the chat window is that interesting could you see the possibilities of using that is that good for example for shy students can you understand this process of how i link the class and the homework and see it as one big picture any comments well for example i'm curious we got a student here who is actually preparing for the fc cambridge examination uh, would you consider using this kind of technology in preparation of your speaking for the exam? Absolutely, and I've done it. So, for okay. example, sorry, done. Absolutely, I think it's a great idea because uh, also speaking, then uh, hearing what I is saying, uh, and maybe take some notes about my mistakes or. Uh, the word I've uh, uh, was pronunciation of, and then uh, improve myself uh, from my from my mistake. I think it's a very great idea, and so also the stunning visualization is a great thing to entertain, entertain and uh, keep uh, the the audience engaged. Thank you. Madalena, so you, sorry, you, I didn't realize. No, no, I didn't realize you were going to get an audio from an, an answer from the audience. That was fantastic. Okay. <laughs> Any more like that? Any more? Yeah, we've got another one. We are sanitizing the microphone. Wait a second. <laughs> Over there. Oh, I'm very nervous because I'm a kind of shy person. <laughs> so I have really collected myself together to speak with you. I'm very thankful to you, Russell, because I feel you really upgraded me as a teacher. And I love your thoughts and your concepts and everything is amazing. I cannot express my feelings <laughs> and lovely. my knowledge in words. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, that's really kind of you. Thank you. <laughs> you know, some flattering is good sometimes. No, it's lovely. Russell, <laughs> don't you feel the same? <laughs> okay, so it's even more valuable then. <laughs> lovely. Okay, you know, one thing I want to say about, um, and, and I'm obviously aware of time, I'm not, I'm not going to quite get through everything I wanted to talk about, but that was really key, and I, I need to show you one more thing about that as well. You know, the, especially for shy students, this can be really interesting. And I know, I think it was Rory, but I'm not sure. Someone mentioned at the beginning, Russell, you know, sometimes though the students will script everything, okay? That is true, and they'll definitely do it when they're recording like that, okay? They will. But I think in a way, at the beginning, that's fine. I kind of wean my students off later by doing activities in the class that get them to prepare the notes and encourage them then to do the recordings at home where they're not scripting the whole thing, but only scripting parts of it. And I think you can often avoid the, get them to do the complete script by only concentrating on, on special sections. In, incidentally, in that one that I showed you with Michelle, all we focused on because afterwards we watched the presentations of all the students in the club. Well, not all of them. I put them into groups of three and they played their recordings to each other. They only focused on five questions that I asked them about the PowerPoint slides. And those were, you know, did, did this person make good use of PowerPoint slides? You know, was there too much text on the screen? Were, was the copyright dealt with? I don't know if you've been noticing, guys, but I, I guess I did it. I normally do. So these are my images, but where I've taken an image, I, I show that um, this is taken from somewhere else. OK, so whereas if you looked at Michelle, I don't remember if you remember, she had a, a Hollywood movie star in the middle of her picture. Obviously, she didn't have the rights really to show that. So I literally gave them just five questions to think about. OK, that when they analysed their, the, their presentations, uh, we were only focusing on the PowerPoint presentation. I didn't do anything about the language at all in that particular 
in that particular session. OK, so you can keep the, the focus really narrow and sometimes that will help. As I said, you can't. Ex and this is definitely what I mistake that I've made in the past is I've tried to teach too much about presentations. OK, in one go. No, it's got to be bit by bit. It could be one week looking at the PowerPoint slides. It could be another week looking at the tone of your voice or the gestures, etc. I don't. I don't think Italian people are going to have any problems with gestures, but maybe they do. Um, uh, I mean, I think I've learned from Italian people rather than the other way around. But anyway, um, so you know, I, just keep that in mind. So I really like this idea of reflecting on what you've done and this ability to, to because also to be honest with you, and my experience. Again, I'm looking at the wrong place. Sorry. In my experience, when I work with these technologies and I get the students to send me back their recordings, sometimes it's too much for me to listen to. So it's really good to get the students to do the analysing of their own recordings and they're likely to retain more information. Your job is just to facilitate it. Focus on language. Focus on organisation. Focus on pacing. Focus on the PowerPoint presentation. Focus on intonation. You would focus each week on, or each time you do a presentation on a different thing. Focus on the hook that you have at the beginning of the presentation. OK, so I really, um, uh, really like uh, the use of Screencast-O-Matic. Now, I'm going to show you one other thing about Screencast-O-Matic, OK? And I'm going to do this through a video. Again, this is authentic, all right? So imagine this. I'm in the class, and my students were presenting. And I was taking notes about their presentations. And then I went home. I opened up Microsoft uh, Microsoft Word. I wrote out five mistakes that they'd all made, all the group. And I just recorded myself going for it using Screencast-O-Matic. Just recorded myself giving feedback to them by doing one general video that they could then play back. And that was really useful the next time they went to do a presentation because they could play it back before just to remind them of what things to think about. And let me just show you that video. Uh, this is a really old one. This would go back as far as 2007. Ho hopefully I can find it. So I'm just gonna do a, a, a quick screen share. Okay, click on share. Uh, App and now, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. I've got the, da, 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 da. Oh, sorry, good, yep. Okay, Remember that. Russell, yep. you've got two more minutes. Oh, two more? <laughs> 11. Oh, yeah, because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, right, brilliant. We'll, we'll end it there then because I'm going to finish with my, my story, all right? So, um, da, 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 what I'm going to do? You've got me panicking now. Yeah, here we go. So, thank you very much. Um, I, I like to make the, the, the voice of, like, in the squid game. I know if you are not. Uh, it, well, it's a TV series which is um, being pe very popular these days. And there was um, a female voice saying, you know, in a funny way, uh, all players are eliminated. Right. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay. All right. So, so okay. You, you're going to be, going to be eliminated, eliminated in about two in minutes. One and a half minutes. Right. Okay. Guys, look at this. There's another idea for using Screencast-O-Matic. And I love this. And this has been quite widely researched. Okay. Um, this is. Okay. Just want to go through. So some I of the literally today. went home. After I'd watched all my students present and I made in 10 seconds, I mean, you know, I wrote out the key points. I turned on screen, screencast o -matic. You'd watch, see, see me doing it all day today or all, uh, in, in the second session. I'm recording myself just going through the common mistakes they're all making. I'm just going to play this to you. Let me just make sure that you actually got the audio, though, before I do that. Otherwise, if you, you won't be able to hear it. So let me just make sure if I'm doing the screen repair. Da, 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 da. No, I've got the same I have. Good. Okay. Right. Lovely. Right. Let's go back to that again now. Presentation. Um, first of all, <coughs> when you're presenting, try to look at the audience as much as you can. A lot of you uh, were, um, in fact, you can see the first two points together here, really, because a lot of you tended to be looking at your notes as you were doing your presentation. And so it's a good idea to try and look at your audience more. And obviously, if you keep looking at your notes, then you can't uh, look at your audience. One, one thing that I do to avoid looking at my notes is, in fact, I don't write notes. I just have a few. What a brilliant way of giving feedback, guys. You know, imagine how much time that saved me. Instead of, instead of me writing out reams and reams and reams of feedback, I can literally just write out the key points, make a video, and then share that video with the whole class and say, right, guys, the next time you do a video, 
these are the things that you need to keep in mind, okay? Or the next time you do a video, you sorry, you do a presentation, these are the things about PowerPoint that you need to get right. So you can really focus the feedback and Screencast-O-Matic is absolutely brilliant for doing that. And that's another thing that you can do using Screencast-O-Matic. And that's why it's one of my favorite technology. In fact, it is my favorite technology. And uh, when I run my courses, I train teachers in using this and all sorts of different ways of using it for feedback, reflection, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, let me come back to my presentation. Is that all right, guys? I've gone two minutes over. I've only got eight minutes left. We can allow you two minutes more, I guess. Okay, so I was going to finish by telling you a story. And I, I, this is going to be... Um, I've told this story before, and honestly, I've told this story in auditoriums with thousands of people, and I've literally had those people like, oh, but it's, it's going to be really hard for me to do this uh, in this way, but I'm going to try my best because I thought it would be kind of nice to finish with a story because we're talking about presentations and stories and public speaking, all right, and because I haven't got a better story to tell than this, I really haven't, all right, so... I'm going to try my best. And just to start this story, just going to do one little thing in pre presentation, in preparation of this story. I'm just going to check something because it would be really funny if I if I was to write. I'm correct. So brilliant. OK, so here goes. I'm going to tell you a little story to finish the day. And I really hope today's session, of course, right at the end of the story, I'll give you the handout. All right. Where you've got all the videos for today. So here we go. My favorite story of all time, or the thing that's most happened to me that uh, was just, um, here we go. So I'm gonna click on share. I'm just gonna go over to the internet. I've just searched for my name. And there I am. But then there's this other guy, also has the same name as me. And he's on the screen. And there I am, but he's there as well. So everywhere I go, whenever I write Russell Stanhard in, it's always me or this other Russell Stanhard guy that comes up. The, I call him the imposter, the Russell Stanhard, the imposter. Now, in 19, and I know Madalena mentioned that I won a few awards. One of them, to be honest with you, was, is quite a, in, very, in fact, it's a pretty important award from the Times Higher. And then another one from the British Council is also pretty big. But the Times Higher one meant that I had lots of exposure on the internet. And I noticed that there was this other guy around with my name. And I said to my mum, well, this is really strange. There's another Russell Stannard and everywhere on the internet. I, I, I said, I'm going to have to investigate him a little bit. So I went off onto the internet and I started to investigate this Russell Stannard. And I noticed that um, he teaches at university. So he teaches at the Open University. And he writes books. Uh, in fact, he's a really famous author and he has written lots of books about using technology, oh, sorry, using um, or teaching young children to learn about science. He writes books about science, about sort of quantum physics and stuff like that. But I mean, OK. And he's also does freelance talks. In fact, incredibly, one time I was doing a presentation in. Um, I was in uh, just trying to think where well, I was in Prague. I was in Prague and I was doing a presentation and I was in the Charles University and I saw that this Russell Stannard, this other Russell Stannard, he'd already been there about two weeks before me doing a talk. And I thought, wow, that's incredible. We, you know, we're kind of at the same place. He plays the guitar as well. I noticed that in some of his pictures, there's a guitar in the background. And he's won some educational awards as well. Now, that's kind of weird because I teach at university. I teach currently I'm teaching at King's University. When when I first noticed about Russell Stannard, I was teaching at Warwick. I write books. So I've written quite a lot of teachers books. And um, I obviously write in a book, you know, about using technology in education. But I'm not as, as successful as Russell, but I um right i've written quite a few books in the past yeah or collaborated on various books some of them even you'll know like the early versions of inside out 
I also do freelance work. In fact, these days, that's all I do. I also play the guitar. And I've also won some educational awards. So it's kind of strange that there's this guy with the name Russell Stannard. And he's got a background that's so similar to my own background. And a couple of really strange things have happened to me. For example, once I got sent a load of books from America, they come to my house and it, it was addressed to Russell Stannard. When I opened it up, the books were actually for the other Russell Stannard, but I, I didn't know where he was. In fact, I thought he lived in California. And then another time I received a lawyer, a royalty check also sent to me again. The money was meant for the other Russell Standard, and I did actually send it back to the company and say, this isn't me. OK, in fact, this has happened a few times. So. On the 26th of December 2013. I was going to see my favourite football team. You know, I love Chelsea. I told you earlier I got on the train. And I sat down and I was sat down opposite someone who was wearing a Chelsea shirt and he was talking to another man who was sitting next to me, but I didn't really take any notice. And they were talking and I was listening to the conversation and one of the people said to the other one, I was kind of like looking at my mobile phone, but I couldn't help hearing the conversation. Because, you know, he, he, he was right on my table where I was sitting on the train. And one guy said to the other one, yeah, well, you know, after Christmas time, uh, once Christmas is over, I've got to fly out to Barbados. We've got a really important meeting. So I was thinking, wow, that's, that's interesting. So then he, they would carry on talking. Then the guy said, yeah, because, you know, it's investment's going to be 10 million pounds. So there's me. I'm on my telephone, but really I'm listening to this. These two people chat and I'm thinking, wow, trip to Barbados, 10 million pound. And then the guy says, well, because, you know, it's the educational foundation. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, hang on a minute. This is incredible. This guy, you know, flying to Barbados, 10 million pound and he's in education. I'm going to look and see who's sitting next to me. So I look around. I think to myself. Hang on. Isn't that Russell Stannard? That looks like that other man, the imposter, the one who's been following me around the world, the one whose checks I've received, whose books have been sent to my house, the one I've looked on the Internet and whose life is very similar to me. It really looks like him. Now, I'm getting really nervous. I'm, what I, I'm, on, the t I'm on my telephone. So I Google myself. I Google myself to quickly look at the pictures and I'm looking at the pictures because this is what I can see and I'm thinking is it him is it him but he's sitting next to me and I'm thinking well hang on a minute uh, you know is it him I'm not quite sure but it, the way he's talking about it seems like it could be him and I want to ask him but I'm typical shy English man and I don't want to interrupt their conversation and it could be so stupid to say to him excuse me are you Russell Stannard so the train arrives now at Chelsea. We get there and we have to change onto another train and go one stop. So I get off the train to leave and I'm still looking at this man as I'm walking off. And it, I notice that he's also getting up. And then I'm thinking to myself, hang on a minute. If this man is getting off the train, he's going to see Chelsea. Not only is he a lecturer, not only has he got the same name as me, not only does he write books, not only does he play the guitar, not only <laughs> do we have all these things in common, but he supports Chelsea. Now I'm waiting and I can see him chatting away. He's got no idea that I'm so nervous, but the train is coming into the station and there are thousands of people there. And I've got a few seconds and I get my courage and I run up to him and I say, excuse me, are you Russell Stannard? And he looks at me and says, ah, you're Russell Stannard. You're Russell Stannard. You're Russell Stannard on the Internet. 
And then the other man says, what do you mean he's Russell Stannard? He says, yeah, yeah, this is Russell Stannard. This is the Russell Stannard I've been telling you about, the one at Warwick University who writes all the books on the internet. He does exactly the same as me. And the two of us are just amazed that we sat next to each other on the train. We sat next to each other on the train and we both knew about each other. And suddenly we are standing there and we're arm in arm and we don't let go. And the train comes and I'm holding his arm. He's holding my arm. The train, all the thousands of people get on the train because we're at the train station. We've got to get to the ground. And I can't get in with him. It's too crowded. So I let go of his arm. I run into another carriage. And now I'm on the train. He's in a different carriage to me. And I, I'm thinking, this is incredible. This is incredible. I just met Russell Stannard. This is amazing. Then I get off the train and I can't find him. He, he must have got off the train, but I can't find him. There's thousands of people. I'm looking. Where is he? Where is he? I've just met Russell Stannard. And now I've lost him. I can't believe it. And I, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to, to do. So I, I phoned my mum. Yeah, of course, that's what you would do. Is it? Yeah, phone my mum's mum, mum. I've just met Russell Stanard. I can't believe it. I've just met him. Yeah, the one that I talked about. And my mum's, wow, that's incredible. I said, yeah, but now I've lost him. So I went to the football match, and I'm looking on the on, uh, in the football match. I'm not even watching the game. The only time in my life I didn't watch uh, the football match because I'm looking for information so I can contact him, and I can't find any email address or telephone number for him to give him a ring. I can't believe that he knows me. I know him. Anyway, I go home that night, and I get an email from his son, the man that was sitting with him. It was his son, and. He sends me this email. Russell, I'm contacting you after my father met you today at Chelsea. He was absolutely stunned that you sat next to him on the train. He has known about you for many years and has even told the rest of his family there was another Russell Stannard. As you know, my dad is a famous scientist, a friend of Stephen Hawking's. At this moment, he is in his study trying to work out the statistical <laughs> probability that you would sit next to him on the train. Quite simply, this is blowing his mind. He will contact you soon. And then a few days later, I get a message from, from Russell Stannard. Russell to Russell, I cannot tell you how flabbergasted I was to meet you on Saturday. Sorry, when Googling Russell Stannard, there seems to be only two of us on the Internet. You could have been in anywhere in the world, but there you were sitting next to me on the train. I had long time wondered about you because we are broadly in the same business, university academic writing books, making videos. Now I have some more amazing news for you. I have been studying our family. You can see how emotional I get, okay? <laughs> uh, Russell Senna and I are great friends. We see each other very often. Uh, he actually got COVID. There we are together. Uh, I'm going to go and see him in December. Incredible man. Uh, he's the founder of the Open University in England. Uh, he's been... Uh, received an award from the Queen and he's become a great friend of mine and that's my story I am so sorry I gave you just two minutes more now <laughs> I hope that it's uh, it's, it's crazy no it's absolutely crazy it yeah. is indeed yeah hang on a minute I've just like got a uh, I think I've, um, I've, I've, has, it, has it gone off has it stopped sharing have I come back? Uh, it hasn't. It hasn't. No, hang on a minute. Thanks for sharing. Now you... Uh, uh, going to cancel it. Hopefully, it's, um, yeah. Uh, and all that, yeah. Hopefully, I'm back now. Yeah. There we are. So, amazing man. Absolutely amazing man. And I always think that it's like destiny. It's become a massive mentor in my life. And um, pff, incredible. And now, when people contact me and say, oh, I'm looking for Russell Stannard, you know, they contact me thinking it's me. And I say, sorry, wrong, wrong Russell Stannard, but here's his email address. 
And but equally think, amazing, yeah, we can say yeah, yeah, today. Yeah, it's absolutely incredible. <laughs> okay. okay, cheers, guys. I tried my best to tell it online. It's not quite the same, but I get yeah, so choked up because really. he's a really close, <laughs> such a close <laughs> friend of mine now. Okay. You did fantastic. We Thank were so inspired. And I think we definitely have something to grab, to retain, to bring home, and even bring to class straight forwardly tomorrow morning. And even we've got some students here who may take advantage of this afternoon and some curious learners who were inspired somehow but this afternoon they are nodding you can't see them but they are nodding and you've got plenty of fantastic comments Lovely. from uh, people attending online so thanks a lot russell don't it was forget amazing. the handout guys teacher yeah. training thank you thank you very much thank you so this is the special handout we can yeah. get yeah just it's, it's automatic it's all automatic as soon as you email me so oh, write it down perfect. carefully teacher training videos or one word teacher training videos at gmail.com okay it's not my email address guys all right that is simply to get the automatic handout all right if you want the handout if you want to email me it's my email my personal email is russellstannard at gmail.com but if you want that handout teacher training videos at gmail.com and it will automatically come to you all right thank you does very much the Russell Stanner have a gmail as well he, do, he does he does he doesn't have the same one unluckily <laughs> he hasn't got okay. russellstannard.com either okay he's okay. very jealous because i own russellstannard.com <laughs> right okay thank you very much russell it was fantastic Tell you cheers here. guys thank oh, you for inviting me thank you very much. cheers Cheers. Cheers. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Thanks for attending, everybody.